Colorado Buffaloes look to knock the stuffing out of the K-State Wildcats. It's Colorado against Kansas State coming up next on FSN. Today, up for the air is rare. Two Big 12 North Division rivals will face each other in a classic offense versus defense battle. The Kansas State Wildcats travel to Colorado to tackle the Buffaloes. Last week, KSU blew away the Cyclones at home. Today, the road gets tough. To stay in the hunt for a Big 12 North title shot, the Wildcats must win. Colorado is dangerous at home. You can never underestimate the power of pride in the upset-minded Buffaloes. A Big 12 Conference showdown. Kansas State in Colorado. Welcome to Ralphie's house. It's a great day alongside the Rockies, but that is not going to slow down. Two old rivals have been getting together since 1912. College Football Saturday, all presented by Kia Sarah, brings you to Boulder as we get ready for Kansas State and the Buffaloes, Colorado. Hi, everybody. Joel Myers alongside Dave Lapman. Welcome to Boulder. Well, a solid season so far for the Wildcats of K-State, especially considering where they were, Dave, over the last couple of years. In fact, a win today, and they become bowl eligible. And the resurgence keyed by a pair out of the backfield, a tandem that was third and fourth on the depth chart at the start of the season. Well, they've taken full advantage of the opportunity to expand their roles. And Kansas State relies on getting that running game going. And both of these running backs have rushed for 100-yard games two different times during the course of the season. They both did it together against Missouri. Johnson, very slippery, elusive. Patton, the little general, is being compared to Darren Sproles. Very strong lower body, 5'7", hides behind those offensive line, and then explodes. Once that running game is established, they go over the top, play action pass with a 6'6", 6-inch, 240-pound quarterback that stands in that pocket like a power forward, very tall, sees over the pressure. They'll also get him out of pocket, get him on the edge, let him throw the ball as well. Very disappointing season for first-year head coach Dan Hawkins for Colorado, 1-8. and eight. But out of the eight losses, four have been by five points or less. So the defensive unit, Dave, has kept them in most games. And it's been led by the linebacker core. Their contact ratio is off the charts. Jordan Dizon has got 100 tackles already. He has got his master's degree in football geometry, takes perfect angles to every play, and he is relentless in his pursuit. Thaddeus Washington, 5'11", 240 pounds, is a thumper. When he hits you, you know it. And both of these guys key the fact that they stop the running game, and then Abraham Wright will take over on the edge with his quickness and speed. And add to these numbers that you're looking at, 12 and a half tackles for loss. When it's third and long, third and extra long, now it's Abraham Wright's down because he has dynamically quick first step quickness off the football. He's a load to handle. Great deal at stake for Gay's State. They don't want to wait and face Texas next week need to win or Kansas final weekend of the season. They want to get it done today. And when we get it done, we're going back to the studio. Join Mike Goldberg and the guys when we return. Welcome once again inside our college football Saturday studios in Los Angeles. Mike Goldberg, DeMarco Clark, Billy Ray Smith. BR, how about this? Upset alert uh -oh. in the ACC. Uh -oh. The mighty Clemson Tigers, number 19 in the nation, go down at the hands of the Turtle. Yes, fear the Maryland Terrapins. Dan Ennis with a 31-yard field goal to win it. Turks are 4-1 and one in ACC play. Big win for Maryland. What's wrong, DeMarco? That, that's what he did. Ah, hush, yes, he did. Hush crowd. All right, will this be a hush situation, Kansas State and Colorado, with Kansas State's defense playing a prominent role once again? Absolutely, and I love the way they do it. Ron Prince has been rotating eight and nine guys in that defensive line trying to get pressure on the quarterback, but they're going to have their hands full. Hugh Charles is the best back. They're going to play all season, and he can bring it downhill. They're going to need all nine guys. Well, yeah, they're going to need actually all 11 guys <laughs> in both huddles because from what you hear out of Colorado, there's a, there's a little bit of grumbling, and you'll normally find grumbling grumbling on a 1-8 football team, <laughs> but coach had the guys get back home after losing to Kansas, giving up a lead, had a little extra conditioning. Oh, now, when you're already licking oh. your wounds from a losing season, that's, that's a little bit tough to swallow yeah, right my there. Back and hurt. I'm guessing uh -huh. there's no grumbling in Boise right now. Boise, Idaho uh, is up. Yeah. No, but Dan is looking at the brighter <laughs> times ahead for the Colorado <laughs> Buffaloes. We're looking at bringing you the first half of game two of our triple header on FSN. Joel Myers, Dave Lapham, Jim Knox. 
from Folsom Stadium when we return right here on FSN. For the first time in years, Jim Knox is not riding Ralphie out of the locker room this year. So we welcome you back to Folsom Field, Boulder, Colorado. The Buffaloes ready to go. Now that they get their second win of the season, let's first check in with Jim Knox. Knoxie. All right, thank you, Joel. Colorado kicking off. Mason Crosby will be doing the kick, and now that's one guy Kansas State does not want to let this game come down on because this is what happened last year. Six seconds left to go in the game against Kansas State in Manhattan, and Crosby now is the 50-yard field goal for the game winner. Colorado wins it 23-20. to Dan Hawkins says, hey, I'm not afraid to give them a 70-yard shot today. If they do that, that will definitely be a college football record, Joel. Well, nicely since the formation of the Big 12, the two losses for Kansas State here in Boulder, you talked about one, they've come by a total of only 11 points. So they've had close ones here. In fact, they've gone two and three since the start of the Big 12 back in 1996. And got a feeling it is going to be a close one with so much at stake well, and for Mason, Kansas State. And Mason Crosby, Joel, he has kicked six of the eight longest field goals in Colorado school history. He has a howitzer off of that right hip. Now, figures is back, but you figure he won't touch it. And that's exactly the way it starts. Back line of the end zone. And that's kind of a surprise that it didn't go all the way through. Really? So K-State, as we look at our Kiazera starting lineup with quarterback Josh Freeman. Well, earlier in the season, it was Dylan Meyer. Now they've gone to the true freshman from Kansas City's Grandview High School. Big guys, you look at his offensive line. Johnson, Nelson, figures the skills with Norwood. Tight end, their leading receiver. And Mastro in a two tight end set when they decide to go that way. Right now, Jordy Nelson's out there, so they're going to spread the defense. Johnson's a single, and on first down, it goes to the tight end. It's Mastrup, and it's a short game as he takes it in just across the 24 to the 25. Kiazera is starting 11 defensively, and this is the unit we were talking about, right? Uh, Boy Doy, Hippolyte, Nicholas, great job up front by the 4 3. The key, though, these three. Washington dies on it. Jones on the corners. Wheatley and Washington. Washington, the flashy one. Wheatley, the steady one. Walters and Harris are the safeties. So they get the quarterback off early. A little dump on. Now Johnson spinning it. And he can't bounce outside. He got back to the line of scrimmage, though. It'll be third and five, so an early third down try with a freshman quarterback. But it's not third and extra long. You know, it's third and makeable, and that's you want to be in those kind of situations. And Josh Freeman, I thought it was a good idea to throw on first down. Colorado giving up just 96 and a half yards a game, number 22 in the country on the ground, 2.94 rush, number 14. Ron Prince knows they're tough to run on. So throw the ball on first down, pick up five yards. Now they find themselves in a third and makeable. Bit of a chilly day, but you couldn't tell with Ron Prince walking the sideline at Church Leaves. Tosser, Johnson's got blockers. He'll get the first down across the 30 and brought down in the secondary out to the 34-yard line. So making the stop for the Buffaloes. First one over and making the spin was the strong safety, Lionel Harris. Good job blocking down by the tight end. Left tackle, left guard, both pulled. He's got a convoy of bodies out in front of him. And Johnson's shown that slipperiness. And the key to the football game for Kansas State is to be balanced offensively. Were they ever last week throwing the ball for 161 yards and rushing it for 156? And then special teams. They scored five touchdowns, Joel, on special teams. Two kickoff returns, two punt returns, and a block punt recovery. Johnson making the most of a bad situation when his offensive lineman was pushed all the way into the backfield. He still got it back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be second and ten, so our Honda keys to the game. And when you talk about balance, obviously running and throwing the football, but they can't afford the third and second and long, yes. especially with a true freshman quarterback. Well, neither team wants to get off schedule offensively. Neither offense is a juggernaut. And he wants to stay on schedule. Understatement of the year. And that's a big, big key for Ron Franklin, former wide receiver coach for the Green Bay Packers, James Franklin. It'll be second and 10. Johnson with the delay. Forget about it. The linebacker you know, grabbing him immediately and making the stop for Colorado. Alex Ligon, the defensive lineman, in fact, on the end, the senior from Torrance, California. 
and this is where you don't want to be. You don't want to be in third and long. And just a good job by Colorado with the they 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 blitz, which is which is safe really. They brought extra people in. Ligon made a great play on that with the penetration disruption tackle for loss. Kansas State off schedule. So now a loss of about five. It's going to be third and long. Only a three-man rush, so Freeman's got all day, surveys it, has Nelson, and he gets the first down. No pressure on the quarterback, he hung in the pocket. You're playing in the hands, Dave, of a young quarterback when you don't make him make quick decisions. Well, in, in rushing three, and all five of Colorado's linebackers, oh, look at him, everybody is about 10 yards down the football field. Three guys within 10 yards of the quarterback, he shows nice patience, steps up in the pocket, and lets his receiver Jordy Nelson work his way free in his zone. Colorado was playing prevent, prevent on that third and 12. So Freeman, a big guy at 6'6, you talked about it. He's got a rifle. Now, what about the touch stuff? Goes out to the tight end. It is complete for a short game. It's a gain of about, as yeah, Pushki took it in, gain of about five. And what they're doing underneath is really helping out Josh Freeman. Well, and I think Josh Freeman, for a true freshman quarterback, is very cool, calm, and poised. And they're doing a good job of getting the ball out of his hand quickly. You know, he's taking three-step, five-step drops maximum and making the quick read and getting the ball out of his hand. He's doing a nice job. They're calling plays to get his feet on the ground. Ball start. Yep. Little, Umpire little, threw it, a little wiggle in, in the middle. A little flinch inside, exactly. False start. Number 65 of the offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. That's big Logan Robinson, 6'8, 340 pounds. Six foot eight inch guard is a rarity. Hey, I mean, at six foot eight, you have to be able to bend out your knees to be able to play inside. It's good to have a quarterback that's Thanks, six yeah. six when your when your right guard is six foot eight. Not many quarterbacks can see over a guy six foot eight at the right guard position. Yeah, you want passing lanes. You don't want uh, power forwards or centers out there. Now Freeman, Bumble. short drop, man. He went for figures who was hit from behind. In fact, Terry Washington got away with a hook. Yeah. I was watching him off the line of scrimmage. He had his left arm wrapped around the wide receiver. Figures got up looking for a flag, but there was none to be found. Pretty good job of blitz pickup by Kansas State, giving Freeman an opportunity to throw the football. And I guess they felt no harm, no foul there. Terry Washington definitely worked his way around figures. Did he hook him with the left arm or not? The officials really know. And two, two so far in the third downs today, only 33% on the season. This is going to be a third and long, though, back at their own 48. Blitz off the edge. Johnson picks it up. Nelson underneath. And he's going absolutely nowhere. Dies on the junior from Hawaii, weak side backer, holds him to a short game. Very, very sure tackle in the open field. This is a speed receiver. Jordy Nelson runs a 4 3 40. And here he comes on the crossing pattern. Dies on diagnoses it and just makes a very sure tackle in the open field. No yards after catch because of the excellence of Jordan Dizon. Proper angle, make the play. Tim Rare in to put it away. 41 yard average. Now what can he do with his mile Both high air? As they've got Chase McBride waiting. Man, he lets it go over his head as he takes his shot from figures at the five. Lands on his wallet. So a net 29 on a 49 yard punt as Colorado will have it for the first time offensively at their own 20 yard line. Kiazera is starting lineup offensively for the Buffaloes. Well, Bernard Jackson, he's one of the leading rushers among quarterbacks in the nation. So we're playing off the positive on Bernard right now. Harrison, Columbus, the tackles Daniels, an academic potential All-American at guard. Charles Cantrell in the backfield with Sprague and Yates. Wideouts and Ryder Gear. He had 21 catches, it seemed like five weeks into the season. He's still got 21 catches. On first to 10, Hugh Charles tripped up right at the line of scrimmage. Outstanding play up front by Rob Jackson, the defensive end, the junior from West Haven, Connecticut. Take me to New Haven and Sally's for a pizza. Now defensively. We'll set the defense in just a moment for K-State because they're right in the middle of the pack, like Colorado, when it comes to 1 through 12 in the Big 12 in total defense. Colorado 6, 
K-State 7. So they're right in the middle of the pack, giving up about 320 yards per game. Well, what they're doing is being very disruptive. 71 tackles for loss, 30 sacks, both in the top 10 in the nation. There's Jackson. He buried it well in the belly of his running back, and it was a real nice decoy play as he gets good yardage using Byron Ellis beautifully. And he gets about eight, so he's short of the first down by two. Kiyosera is starting 11 defensively. Now Campbell, one of the leaders in the nation, in tackles for losses with Jackson. Eccles ran up front. And Walker, Dials, and Archer. Archer, they're all everything, guys. They can talk forever about Archer. Then Kenny and Moore on the outside of the defensive backs with Erker and Williams. And Moore, a true freshman starting in place of Garvin at the quarterback spot. Is he running a Dave? Empty backfield quarterback draw. You'd have to believe so. Will he get there? No. Great pursuit. Making the stop up front. Ian Campbell gets another tackle for a loss. Yeah, that'll make 15 and a half for Ian Campbell coming into today's game, leading the conference, 10th in the nation with 14 and a half. And he is just so athletic because he took an inside move and it looked like initially, watch him take the inside move. And oh boy, am I in trouble? No, spin right out of there. And then his, his teammates help uh, funnel the quarterback Bernard Jack and Jackson back to him. But watch this athletic ability to stay after it and then stay after the mobile quarterback. And of course, he's assisted on the tackle as well by, Anto um, uh, by um, uh, Blake Seiler. But just a great job by Ian Campbell. What an athlete. Now going to get field position out of it. A line driver turnable time for Yaman Figures. He should be able to get something out of it from the 35. He's got a lane to the 45. All the way to the midfield strike. So K-State, outstanding field position. Short field when we come back. Huge game for the Wildcats. Can they get it done after the 14-yard return? Five figures. College football on FSN, presented by Kia Sarah, the new value frontier. Also brought to you in part by DirecTV. DirecTV, rethinking the way television should be. By Expedia.com, enjoy your trip. And by Dr. Pepper, 23 flavors that add up to one full taste. Dr. Pepper, there's more to it. Believe me, Dave Lapp will tell you all about it. Lives on this stuff. <laughs> Joel Myers, Dave Lapp, Jim Knox, back in Boulder, one of our favorite places in the Big 12. And they always have fun. A house divided? That's tough. Maybe after the game they can pull it together. You know, you know it's amazing. Coach Hawkins at, at Williamette, his first coaching stop, 40 wins, 11 losses, and a tie. At Boise State, 53 and 10, four WAC titles in five years. He's got eight losses his first year here. This is foreign to him. He has never had a losing season as a head football coach, ever. Little man of the backfield in motion. Leon Patton at 5'7". Freeman looks in that direction. Both he gone. comes over the middle. Boy, he didn't look that way a couple of weeks ago, did he? Where he went through his progressions, found figures, a positive when it looked like it was a negative. Yeah, there's no question. He has shown some poison composure. Colorado, the Honda keys to the football game, they want to finish. They want to finish the season. But before you finish the season strong, you have to finish every play, every series, every quarter. They've been outscored by 44 points in the fourth quarter. That can't continue. And they have to stay on schedule. They cannot afford negative plays, second and 12, third and 14. Team. That's coffin nails for them with their offense struggling like it is. Raymond after the game of seven checking off to a run for Patton. A guy that can, uh, can he post up Darren Sproles? Can he take him down on the block Absolutely. and post him up at 5'7"? He's 5'7", Sproles is 5'5 five, five and a half, so he can post him up. But the thing that he can do is just like Sproles did, hide behind those offensive line. We talked about his right guard being 6'8". He's 5'7". That's a the height. It's a differential. He could hide in that huddle. I mean, he could just be consumed. You know, the coach is big right, you know, right Ron, guard. I love Ron Prince about Pat. No, he goes. He's not small. He's just short. Right. Meaning he's thick. I mean, he is rock solid. Right. He's got a very strong lower body from the leg from the waist down. He's as strong as anybody. Let's go Third on. down. It's out for Nelson. Nice grab by Jordy Nelson. And the throw by Freeman, where only Nelson could get to it. Yeah, absolutely. Brad Jones had pretty good coverage, and that's a linebacker on a wide receiver. Football is all about matchups. You try to get mismatches. 
and you get a linebacker and walked away on a wide receiver in the slot. That favors the offense, particularly when you have a quarterback that throws the ball as accurately as Josh Freeman did. He found the mismatch on his pre-snap read, and he got the football right there. This is a true freshman that's growing up quickly. It's a first down on the third down conversion. They're now three and four. Freeman in trouble and takes his shot off the edge. He wasn't blindside, but still a big one from Jordan Dyson. The leads Colorado and stops a weak side backer. A loss of seven. And Chappelle Brown came off the slot as well. The nickel, uh, the nickel defensive back. And, and you know, what you have to do, that, that's, a, that's just a brain cramp up front. You know, you have to block guys. How do you not slide the offensive line, who's the linebacker that's lined up at a defensive end rush spot, the offensive lineman unblocked? That's inexcusable. But a wide out screen and almost goes big as it's taken in on that side. They got the slip by Daniel Gonzalez, the junior from Augusta, Kansas. It almost went for a big play. Short game inside the 39, a gain of eight. Jordy Nelson got the good block. You know, you block for your teammate. Jordy Nelson gets a nice kickoff block right there and pick up some yards. But when you get thrown off schedule with an unblocked linebacker, Dyson's got 100 tackles already. How do you not put a big body on him? And he got the sack throwing Kansas State off schedule. They need nine. Set up the screen. It's packed. One block in front, and he'll be short, but in field goal territory. Chase down. From behind by Brad Jones. We go to a Dr. Pepper game break. Let's check in with Mike Goldberg. Mike. Joel, thank you very much. Let's check in on number one, Ohio State, hosting Illinois. First possession, 14 plays, 80 yards. Touchdown, Chris Wells. Touchdown, Buckeyes. 7 0, number one, Ohio State. Meantime, an upset in the SEC. Sylvester Crewman, Mississippi State, defeat Alabama 24 16. Thank you, Mike. It'll be a attempt for Jeff Snodgrass. He's 11 of 17. He's already hit from 52 and 53 yards out. It's a 47-yard attempt for the first points of the day. Plenty of distance, but hooked he hooked it way too much. Overswung. Overswung that leg a little bit. So good field position is wasted. Don't forget the Wildcats started with the football in the midfield strike. It glances off the upright, hooked it too much. College Football Saturday, all presented by Kia's Hair, continues from Boulder, Colorado. Joel Myers, Dave Lapp, Jim Knox, back at Folsom Field. Now, what a day for football. You love this, Dave. Mid-50s, kind of gray skies. Feel like the four horsemen could show up. That's right. Current BCS standings all brought to you, sponsored by KFC Famous Bulls. No shocks with the top two. Louisville will move up. West Virginia will move down after Louisville's victory on Thursday night. Hugh Charles gets the call to the backfield. Jackson keeps it himself, though, in the waggle. And on the roll, finds his man in stride. Big catch, long game for Colorado's Alvin Barnett, the junior from Tulsa. A gain of 31. He found him, and boy, that was a nice roll of the run. Yeah, it was a good job. Bernard Jackson, he's a mobile quarterback. Get him out of pocket, change the launch point. They pick up the inside blitzing by Kansas State. Get Jackson out of the perimeter. He's got one read down the football field, and his one read breaks open. Barnett, nice play, hits him right between the one and the seven on the move. Bernard ja Jackson definitely has a strong enough throwing arm. His problem is making the proper reads and getting the ball out on time. It's so all the way down to the 38 of K-State. Hugh Charles will get it this time. Short side of the field. Bolts inside the 35. Good game. Close to the 33. It's a gain of four. Let's we'll see where they put it down. They'll put it to the 34. So a gain of four, not five. Kansas State defensively is most concerned with Colorado getting on the outside third quadrant of the football field. And they've done it two plays in a row. They got Bernard Jackson out of pocket on the outside third of the field. And he delivered a, a, a beautiful pass. And, and right there, they have Hugh Charles running to the outside third quadrant of the field. That's Kansas State's biggest fear with the speed of those two guys on the perimeter. Out of the gun. Jackson calling his own number. And he can't get away from the linebacker. Reggie Walker, the strong side backer. You know, Dave, when you were talking about Hugh Charles in particular, here's a guy that averages 5.3 per carry on a team that is so one-dimensional. 
that says a lot about Hugh Charles. And I know they talk about him as a track guy, but he's trying to do his best to hit that hole and hit it aggressively. First down line, all brought to you by Overstock.com. Search, shop, save up to 70% at Overstock.com. So overall, not an awful year for Hugh Charles. No, in, in this third and five, long five, is on the outer extremity of a, of a third and two long for Colorado. Jackson in that mid-range and it batted away and Campbell did it again. Yep. He read the lane perfectly and the quarterback's eyes to time it. Well, the thing with Ian Campbell is the want to. He has a motor that is always in full RPMs. This kid is a very, very aggressive football player, loves to play the game. In every play, he never cheats himself. He goes full bore. Now Mason Crosby, this is not long by his standards. It'll be a 51-yard attempt. He's already hit a best of 56 this season. He's got a miss from 63 that was just short. It's on its way for the lead wow. for Colorado. And he has pulled it. He hooked it. He a little bit too hot. Heated it up too much. Well, as soon as Colorado passes midfield, they're in Mason Crosby's reign. It's scoreless so far in Boulder. up of two of the lowest scoring teams in the Big 12 and true to form they are scoreless so far almost 12 minutes gone by coming up next don't forget our college football Saturday triple header will continue eighth ranked USC coming up their first loss in Pac-10 playing a long long time they'll match up with the 0-8 Stanford Cardinal I guess they should get back on track college football Saturday it all comes your way right after our matchup right here on FSN well, Joel, you know, it's always it's always important to score first, and it's doubly important in this one where offense is struggling in this game coming up. Well, you got a quarterback and receiver that have uh, hooked up, and what a tandem they are, and what a game they had last week, even though they lost the football game to Oregon State. Booty and Smith put on a show. It was amazing, and it came down to that two-point conversion. Freeman on first down. And on the move, boy, can he motor for a 6'6 guy. He got about seven, almost eight yards out of the play. He's out of a out of a football family. Josh Freeman, his dad, Ron, played in the USFL, so he grew up in the game. Let's head down to Jim Knox. Knoxie. Joel Thaddeus Washington, starting linebacker for Colorado, not in the game right now. Went to the locker room, partially knocked out his two front teeth. They put gauze on his two front teeth. He's expected back in the game. Tough guy, guys. Man, I'll tell you what, that's that's some hitting right there to knock Thaddeus uh, Washington's teeth loose. Whoever did that, I got a dose of respect for it because Thaddeus brings it. It's going to be second, a little under three. James Johnson has not been able to get off a dozen that time either. We talked about this Colorado defense. Unfortunately for them, they were on the field for way too many snaps. Brad Jones did a nice job that time, Joel, of, of penetrating and, and making the running back bounce it where he didn't want to bounce it. Colorado plays downhill. They attack the line of scrimmage. They're, they're giving up less than three yards a carry. They're giving up only 96 and a half yards a game on the ground. They've only given up two 100 yard rushing games to a running back. They've got a, They've only allowed two in the last 22 games going all the way back to 05. K-State three of five so far on their third down tries. It's the tight end and the extra effort get it gets it from Michael Pushki. He's a junior and a transfer from Northeast Oklahoma A&M knew where he needed to go he saw the stick yeah he did and and he didn't have to run much of a route and Dyson was in is in coverage and watch Dyson here he makes the read and he sees that the move the move tight end is going to get the football can't get up there quite quickly enough to stop it he picked up some turf though that's a pretty good deal they picked up some real estate but could not quite take the tight end down before advancing the chains they've got to get the ground game going whether it's Patton or Johnson though blitz off the edge Let's good go read it's out to the tight end Norwood 
And not much, but still, Freeman was about to get decked. The blitz off the edge on the opposite side. Honestly, Joel, a lot of the passing game they're executing with Josh Freeman is a running game. It's the quick, get rid of the football like a long lateral. I mean, a lot of the stuff is just, it's out of his hand so quickly. The West Coast offense can be very, very quick tempo. And that's exactly what Kansas State's doing right now. They're getting the ball, the short passing game, low risk, short passes. It's almost like a, a controlled running game. So high percentage plays. Absolutely. And three step drops. Freeman, oh, nice little shovel. James Johnson, some room and a block on the outside from his fullback. He's got a first down. Outstanding block downfield. That was number 34 for the Wildcats of Kansas State. Antonio Brown, the wide receiver. And I'll tell you, just well executed by Freeman. And Johnson has good vision, good patience, lets everything set up in front of him. And down the football field, working hard, hard at the wide receiver position, Gonzalez throwing a block as well. Excellent call. Kansas State is, uh, they're mixing it up well. Offense coordinator James Franklin's in a nice rhythm as a play caller right now with this West Coast offense first down at the Colorado 40 figures the motion man going to the same side as Gonzalez and again the umpire seeing something right in the middle of the offensive line yeah I think it was the big boy again Logan Robinson flinching looked like he moved to me full start 65 of the offense five yard penalty first down and it was him and once you get that six foot eight inch frame moving it's hard to stop watch the big fella flinch he can't move can't move a muscle oh can't do that you can't lurch forward. You can't fake the start of the play. Could you do that for me again? And Logan Robinson, once you get 6'8", start to uncurl, you can't stop it. It's all over. It sounded like a cross between Jerry Lewis and Soupy Sales. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> It'll be first and 15 for the 45. You're a sick puppy. <laughs> Freeman. It's gone. It's Gonzalez. And he's got good yardage after the Markov. He's down inside the 38 to the 37. What's at stake today for Kansas State? A win, and they're bowl eligible for the first time since the 2003 season with a true freshman quarterback. Whoa. Talk about big time. That'll really grow. Well, and, and what that also means, Joel, is an extra month of practices with that, with that young quarterback and young team. We'll be right back after this word from Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler at the end of one. Welcome back once again to Folsom Field as we get ready for the start of the second quarter. Joel Myers along with Dave Lapp and Jim Knox and K-State for the third time today starting with the football. Every time they've had it, they've made their way into Colorado territory. They're playing keep away, Joel. 21 staffs to Colorado, 7. And 90 yards, but most of it through the air. Now Johnson ad-libbing on his own. Changes hands finally after running right with the ball in his left hand. Looked a lot more comfortable the other way, and he gets it down to the 21-yard line. So I was about to say, Dave, 85 of the 91 yards to end the first quarter. We're through the air. They get a big run from Johnson. Well, they get a 17-yard journey here because Colorado overcommits, and, and Ryan Walters loses his contain on the backside. You have to play your defensive responsibility. Colorado's very aggressive, and they flow to the football. That time they overflowed, and Johnson burned them. Last week, Johnson 115 yards on 22 carries. Two weeks ago, 127 on 20. Looking for his third straight 100-yard game. And boy, does he carry the pile there. He takes it for six down to the 15. Well, he's, he's a bull. He, he's clever. I'll tell you what, he's a very deceptive running back with his speed, with his elusiveness. Uh, he's slippery now. He never, he never takes a flush hit. He always, you know, it's always a glancing blow. He has a great feel for making people miss. He gets small when he needs to by turning that body at just the absolute perfect time. Very, very clever running back. Well, out of the timeout at the end of the first quarter, all of a sudden, Kansas State capable of running the football. Ninth play of the drive that started back in their own territory. Johnson not going anywhere that time. May have lost a half a yard. That is the ninth play of the drive that started back at the K-State 34. Looking for our first point of the day, and I talked about two of the low-scoring teams, Dave, in the Big 12, Colorado dead last. In right. fact, only 14 points a game. Out of 119 Division 1A teams, 109th. And then Kansas State, well, they're averaging 21 per contest, but that is 10th in the Big 12. So two teams that have really struggled finding the end zone. Colorado hasn't scored an offensive touchdown in eight quarters. Two games, they have 11 offensive touchdowns in nine football games. 
They do have a defensive touchdown to make it 12. But that's the fly in their ointment. And points and possessions are prized in this game. Patton into the game, finds a crease, hits it outside. He goes, touchdown, Kansas State. They're on the board on a third and four. 16 yards for Leon Patton. Ryan Walters missed the tackle. And Leon Patton, the little general, does a good job. And, and it's a nice rotation at the running back position with James Johnson and Leon Patton. And they pull the center, right guard, and tackle on that. And right here, there's the missed tackle. Just took a, a little too flat an angle, Ryan Walters. And Patton has acceleration. And once the tackle is missed by Ryan Walters, see you later. He's inside the pylon. Snodgrass for the point after. It is perfect. So K-State was so much on their plate today. Trying for their sixth win of the season. Oh, it's more than already last year, and they lead it by seven after a 66-yard drive. Seven to nothing lead for Kansas State on a very efficient drive. Mick getting the pass going early, and then Dave on our Accus Gouring drive. The run took over in the second half of the drive. Nice balance in the play selection, 10 plays, well executed. Watch the center Bedore pull, the tackle Frierson pulls. One tight end blocks down, do a good job of sealing on the perimeter. You have the missed tackle by Ryan Walters. That's a pretty good job, Jordan Bedore, to snap the football and then to pull and lead out in front and make a nice block on the edge like he did. That's not an easy task for a center. Snodgrass kicks it away over to the far side. Terry Washington, defensive back, will take it at the one. With blocking past the 20, but only the 23. It's K-State, good special teams all year long. They closed well. Colorado is going to start deep in their own territory. Long fields they do not need with the way they get it done offensively. So they'll put it down between the 23 and 24 of the Buffaloes. The best shot of the day so far, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> well, he's got a little Kansas State action growing on the cheeks. Wildcat. And he's the warmest of the bunch. I'm telling you. Looked a little cozy in that outfit. A little uh, post Halloween action. Ellis in the backfield. The junior from Culver City, California, Venice High School. And Jackson on the misdirectional, keep it himself. No shock there. And his legs taken out from under him. The defensive back coming up, Justin McKinney, to make the play after the gain of a little more than six, almost seven. Well, Bernard Jackson runs a 4-3-40. I mean, you know, he can, he can scoot a little bit. So when he gets out on the perimeter, you know, he, he, he's got some, some movement. Pretty good job in the open field to, to, to reroute him, make him go east and west. Once, once, he, once he turns it up and head, heads straight up field with his speed, He's a huge factor. The Alabama quarterbacks, Jackson, fifth in the nation with 486 yards rushing. Seventh in the country among quarterbacks, 54 yards per contest. It's going to be the reverse, but it was well diagnosed. Devon Robinson brought down quite easily after the pitch by Hugh Charles, so it didn't fool anybody. Well, I'll tell you, Rob Jackson played his defensive responsibility perfectly and stayed at home. And that's the key. Watch the defensive end. He's not going to be full. Takes it upfield. Jackson corrals him. Takes him to the turf. Excellent, excellent football play. He realizes, reroutes himself, shows some good speed. Man, you talked about throwing a, a football team off schedule. Jackson had him second and short. Now you're looking at third and 15, 16. That's tough for this offense. Not exactly productive. Eight of 51. That's what Kansas State's all about, tackles for loss. Jackson, plenty of time underneath. That's his tight end gear, and that's his first catch in about four weeks. Wire gear, who is sitting on 21 catches for the last three, four games. It'll be short of the first down, though, and a punting situation coming up. you got to wonder about a gadget play this early in the game. Dave, hit second and short in your own territory. Yeah, I guess, I guess the thinking was that that's, a, that's an opportune time, because even if it doesn't go, I don't think they felt like they'd get blown up for as many yards as they did. Jackson read it perfectly. 71 tackles for loss coming into the game. Almost eight tackles for loss per game, 10th in the nation. They've already accumulated about three or four today. Figures waits for the punt. And will not call for the fair catch and an easy wrap. 
first one down there for the Buffaloes. Terrence Wheatley, the defensive back, he puts him right down at the 31-yard line. That's where the Wildcats will have it when we return to Folsom Field. College football on FSN, presented by Cell Phone Karma. It's real. Kyocera Wireless reminds you to dial responsibly. Also brought to you in part by Windows. Live and life is good. By Dr. Pepper, 23 flavors that add up to one bold taste. Dr. Pepper, there's more to it. And by Overstock.com, surge, shop, and save up to 70% at Overstock.com. Every single sip of Dr. Pepper I taste, I can taste all 23 flavors. You've been there. I love Dr. Pepper. I know you're, I think you're I'm a, a pepper. aren't you a berries and cream diet guy? Look at, look at Kansas State on first down, mixing up, throwing oh, it three times. The issue. Three for three on first down passing. They've run it six times for 22 yards. Nice little mix on first down. They run Jordy Nelson in motion from their own 31. Looking short, Freeman's gone. Linebacker. Reggie Walker, the strong side backer, or check that, for Colorado that time was Abraham Wright, their yep. sack master. And he gets another one, and look, very aggressive, you block down, and as a result of blocking down, the one that ends up untouched is the best pressure guy that they've got, and, and, the, and unblocked, and you have to do it that way. They brought more than Kansas State could block, and as a result of bringing so many guys inside, you have to block inside out. Abraham Wright comes clean, and he has his 11th and a half sack of the season, trying to get the record. The record right now for Colorado is 13 and a half. Patton on second and 16. Short yardage, cracking it over to the left side, out to the 28, given the 29 yard line. So Leon Patton with the only score of the game, a 16 yard run that came. 90 seconds in the second quarter, but still a third and long for a true freshman quarterback coming up. Great call by Ron Collins on first down. If they run the football between the tackles, it's a run blitz that hits it right in the mouth. If they don't run it and throw, he's going to get his best rush guy, Abraham Wright, unblocked. It worked out well for him. Very, very intelligent call. And they're giving that prevent defense again right now. Freeman 12 of 13, 85 yards. Here comes the delay for Patton. He won't get there. Boy Doy, after you slow down low, Boy Doy cleaned up from behind. Only a gain of five in a punting situation on the first three and out of the day for Kansas State. So Colorado got it done. And look at this print, third and 12, three man rush. Everybody else is at least 10 yards from the line of scrimmage, and then they can react up on the football. Kansas State decides to run the draw, and Colorado comes downhill at it. Back deep for the Buffalo, Chase McBride waiting for the rare punt. His first, a good one. Second, real good hang time. It'll be a fair catch. And McBride takes it in cleanly at the 22. So again, Colorado stifled offensively. They only got 46 yards of total offense so far in the game. And now, when we come back, they're looking at a long field. Mike Goldberg, DeMarco Farr, Billy Ray Smith getting set for the college football Saturday halftime report. The countdown has begun to one versus two. Almost here. Uh, Penn State head coach Joe Paul takes a bad hit on the sideline. We'll update you as far as his condition goes. 79-year-old Joe Paterno back out to Boulder, Colorado. Joel. All right, Mike. These battle, uh, battle in this matchup of two offensive firepowers. This is now 7-0 Kansas State. Got to get Colorado going here. Let's see the sequence they use on their play calling, Dave. They've only had 10 snaps so far in the game. They run Robinson who puts oh, it to the ground man. on the reverse. He better get down to the football. He did too nonchalant. Brandon Archer was all over the situation. I think Archer came up with it. I think they stole the football back at the 16, and they did. In Colorado, that was one of the things that they'd done pretty well all year. They were plus seven in the turnover department. McKinney's got it. Archer, though, was right there to scrape it away from Robinson at the end of the play. Well, Archer comes in like a heat-seeking missile, and Archer just knocks him backwards. He knocks Robinson off the play, just, just rejects him off the play. You have a bigger body, Robinson 5'9", 190. Archer came in with the full force of the linebacker he is, at six feet, 240 pounds, Ron Prince loves it. That's the aggressiveness of Archer and two passive by Robinson. Big takeaway. James Johnson, they pull the left guard. 
You talked about the big left guard at 6'8. Didn't do much, though, as Logan Robinson was in front of the play, but shut down pretty well after his short game. And they put it down after a gain of only a yard. Well, they, it, coming into the football game, Kansas State had 19 takeaways, 24th in the nation. 11 fumble recoveries, 8 interceptions. Make it 20 with their 12th fumble recovery of the season. And a very big one in a game like this with Colorado struggling to score. You don't want to give away possessions. You give away possessions in a short field, you're giving away points. It'll be second and nine for the 15. Figures the motion man. They go the opposite way to Johnson. Nothing there, and he's popped out of bounds and run out of bounds as the defensive oh, wow, back, and it's going to be a late one. Yep. Harris was riding him, the strong safety. You know, I thought he kind of let him go. I didn't think he threw him to the ground. I thought he tried to let him go to the ground, but the official claimed that just let him go because you're more than five yards out of bounds. And here he comes putting the putting the wrap on Johnson is Harris. And he just kind of drops him gently to the turf, but it was well out of bounds, more than five yards out of bounds, and the official throws the flag on him. A real break for Kansas State. Ball. Personal foul. Number 25 in the defense, half the distance, first down. It was a loss of two. It was going to be third and a dozen, and instead now, it's first and goal. Well, I'll tell you, Harris has got to be frustrated because you know even though he lost track of where he was in the football field that was his mistake he realized he was out of bounds because he didn't fling him to the ground he just didn't realize how far out of bounds he was and i think that's why the official dropped the flag unfortunately i didn't think it should have been dropped john Inbuski sets up in front of james johnson the bigger of the two backs freeman on the play fake end zone figures touchdown kansas Design. Great execution of the naked bootleg. All the run action fake goes to the left, and out all by his lonesome comes Josh Freeman on a naked bootleg, and he hits his primary receiver. Your mom figure. Watch all the run action to the left. Here comes Freeman out to his right. Little naked bootleg. And there's Figures breaking clean across the middle, and he hits him for the touchdown. They gave Josh Freeman a run pass option. When he saw Figures breaking clean, his eyes got big, and he said, I can score. And he did. Snodgrass for the point after. And points off a turnover. Archer forced it. Robinson couldn't come up with it. McKinney recovered it. And Figures gets the touchdown pass from Josh Freeman. Short field, and they capitalize. Kansas State on top by 14. Welcome back to Folsom Field. College football Saturday, all presented by Kia Sierra or at Big 12 Country in Kansas State. Short field on our accurate scoring drive after the takeaway. And uh, Dave, we'll talk about the desperation now of Colorado. You go to Gadget Place, a consecutive series in your own territory, but first to look at the score. Well, it's a naked bootleg, and uh, this is part of the West Coast offense that can be very dynamic. You have a couple of options to throw to deep, intermediate, and short. A lot of times there's a tight end to throw to a, at, a, at the short level. Three years to drop the football off, and Freeman read it out perfectly and hit figures for the touchdown. Great execution, great call. Snodgrass in and out of the end zone, out of the reach of Jerry Washington, and another long field. But back to the philosophy of a, a head coach looking for anything. Uh, you're going to gadget plays this early, you're pretty desperate. Well, and I think when you're one and eight, you don't want to leave any bullets in the barrel. You know, and you're going to try to, there's a fine line between taking too many chances to try to get something going for your football team to light some kind of fire and then having them backfire like it did on that play when they turned the football over. And on first downs, Colorado so far through the game, four carries for only six yards. Their rushing total, in fact, for Colorado. They've only got three yards on eight carries. And that doesn't do a thing. Up the middle it goes for Hugh Charles for only about two or three as we head down to Jim Knox. Knoxie. All right, thank you, Joel. Hey, uh, Dave, I found your cousin down here. There he is. Big Dave. Yeah, there we go. Don't forget college football fans. You can email Knoxie. us throughout today's game. Ask Knox at sbcglobal.net. That's ask Knox at sbcglobal.net. We'll get to some of those emails, answer those somewhere in the second half. You ready? Hey, you look cold in that outfit? Uh, you know, as being being a Buffalo myself, I uh, out of body here. I got you. He took oh. my barrel, Knox. He took my barrel. I can't believe it. And Jackson on second and long, and the grab made. Now was he in bounds? Juggling. No, they're going to say 
that it's out of bounds. Dusty Sprague, the intended target. Saying he didn't have possession. He, the official was signaling a juggling act. All you have to do is have one foot in bounds at the college level, but you have to have possession of football. Man, there's my barrel. Yeah, it took me a long time to get that thing painted right, you know? How much antifreeze? How much antifreeze, by the way, is in that man's system? Quite a bit. Quite a bit. <laughs> That's a lot of paint right there now. How long will it take for that paint to come off? I like the yellow eyes. Now, are we going to get a challenge? I think uh, I think maybe, because you have to have possession and only one foot in bounds. Did Dusty Sprague have full possession? The official wasn't disputing he had a foot in bounds. He said he never didn't have control of the football. The last play is under review. We will take a timeout. It is going to be challenged. Play under review with 551 left in the half. And Colorado, it would have been enough for the first down. They need it. I don't blame Dan Hawkins at all. We'll return to Folsom Field. Deep deficit when you can't score all that often like Colorado. Coming off a 31 to 10 After win knew, over Iowa State. It was a catch. He got both feet and possession. First down at the 36. Well, it paid off. Dan Hawkins with a challenge. Kansas State up 14 to nothing, looking for back-to-back -back wins for one of the few times this year. And it is a first down up to the 36. That was a good throw by Bernard Jackson, rolling to his left, being a right-handed quarterback, squaring his shoulder pads up and showing good mechanics to throw the ball as accurately as he did. Let's take a look. There's the throw by Jackson. Little juggle. Did he get possession? Yes. One foot, right foot down. Here comes left foot, left foot down. It doesn't matter if left foot's down or not. As long as right foot's down with possession, it's a catch. So it was good on Sunday, too, is what you're telling me. Yeah, potentially. Charles on first down. Burrowing his way up the middle for only two. And that's the story for Colorado. Now, Colorado averages, we remind you, only 14 points a game. So they've got to go over their average to win today. Yeah, and, and they haven't scored an offensive touchdown in two games, eight quarters. Their only touchdown. And Ron Prince is excited about the opportunity to make a bowl game. If they hold on and get their sixth win, they're bowl eligible. And that means that he gets another month of practicing with his roster that will give him an opportunity to develop the middle of the roster. His point is so well taken. Virginia Techs and all the programs have turned it around. Getting to the bowl and having those young players with all those extra practices bodes well for his program. It'll be second and eight. Jackson floods it on that side. Robinson has it, but not much available with the flag down in the play. Robinson down close to the 40. Greg Burks, Big 12 referee. Ruffy the passer, number 56 in the defense, 15 yards, automatic first down. It's called on Quentin Eccles, a senior from Fort Worth. Six feet, 315 pounder. Getting a little bit uh, too too anxious in there. Well, you brought up Ron Prince and the bowl eligible possibility today. You want to get it done today because next week you're at home against Texas. Right. You don't want to gamble on not only Texas at home, but then your in-state rival. You've got the Jayhawks on the road in Lawrence for your final regular season game. And what he's trying to do is break a seven-game conference road losing streak. They've lost seven in a row on the road in the Big 12. They want to snap that today. Now on first down after the penalty Let's mark go. off plenty of time and not even close. He was going on the outside for Cody Crawford and he was available. The wide receiver, the sophomore from San Diego. Now below 50% on the season for Bernard Jackson. And you can see 119 teams in Division 1A play. Well, and, and yeah, he's completing 46 and a half percent of his passes on, on the season, which in uh, three touchdown passes, seven interceptions. Now Jackson looking for the screen. It's Charles and Brandon Archer on the spot again. He's kind of their glue guy. When we talked to Ron Prince. He said, I can go on and on about Brandon Archer. Right. Archer. That's how good he has been, and he's constant all year. And what he also does is he demands to play on special teams, as do a lot of starters with Kansas State. He was special teams player of the week last week in the uh, victory at Iowa State. He's the leading tackler on the football team, and Urker got involved out of the safety position as well. And now you have third and six, which is basically third and extra long for this Colorado offense, the way they struggle on third down. 
Well, so far on third down today, they're not. A, they don't have a thing. They're 0 for 3. This is a big one. Keep the drive alive, trailing by 14. And the big bull is not going to get there. Mel Holiday, 5'8", 210 pounds, a senior from Omaha, has started his college football career at Nebraska. So an interesting call on third to about six. Now you're one and eight. It's fourth down. Is it four down territory? I mean, if you had gained some yards, I think it'd be an easier call. But you still have to go for it. You're one and eight. You're on their side of the field. I think it's four down territory, and, and, and Coach Hawk is going to go for it. But I think he wishes that that something was picked up by Hall today, so it'd be fourth down a little easier than fourth and a long five. They will go for it on fourth down. One for nine on fourth down this year. Only 11 percent. Jackson with plenty of time and way over the head of Spray, his wide receiver. Not even close. Ball sailed on him. He's been high with his release point, and uh, it's just it's just tough. I mean, Colorado knows their limitations offensively, and, and in a normal situation, you wouldn't be going for it here on fourth down and a long five. But as I said before, one and eight. You're on their side of the football field. You're already down 14 points. You've got to try to make something happen. Leon Patton is going to start the drive for Ron Prince with Josh Freeman at quarterback once again. A 14 to nothing lead as they take over on downs inside of three to play. So plenty of time. Pat Ooh. really popped by Dyson. He came up, met him right in the hole. You could hear it all the way up here from the honorable mention all Big 12 or last year. You know what I like about Dyson? Be easy to say, you know what? We're not getting any support from our offense. And you know, what's the sense? What's the use? Immediately he comes in and makes probably his hardest hit of the game. That's a guy you want to have in your team. It's easy to play when you're up 14 nothing and you're trying to qualify for a bowl game. When you're one and eight and down 14 nothing, that's when you show if you're a football player or not. And that kid is a football player. Yeah, he's got plenty of heart. You don't question his motive. Second and seven. Pat short side of the field breaks the tackle to the line. Takes another shot, but still good yardage. You know, yes, he's got it close to the first down, shy by a little more than a yard. In fact, Joel, I have a tremendous amount of respect for this Colorado defensive football team in general. I mean, they have not gotten much support, and all they continue to do is play hard. Their mentality is, let's finish the game ourselves. See if we can force a fumble. Washington trying to force the fumble. He may have had a couple of teeth loosened, but you wouldn't know it by that hit. That is, Washington put his face right in there, trying to knock the ball free. They're figuring not put it on the ground, pick it up and score, make an interception score. We, if we have to do it by ourselves, so be it. Let's do it by ourselves. Inside of 90 seconds, all three timeouts on the board, though, for Kansas State. Need a yard, yard and a half. They'll go to Pushki, and he's got the first down. He has hit and dragged there by the linebacker, Bernie. And, in fact, the safety, Benjamin Bernie, came up. He's got the first down, though, and it stops the clock at the 47. Kansas State running this West Coast offense, James Franklin and Ron Prince, understand the advantages of the tight end in the West Coast offense. It's, it's an offense that's beautiful for tight ends, and they're utilizing them so well today with that short, controlled possession passing game. First down line brought to you by Overstock.com, your online source for savings on everything from video games to big screen TVs. On first down for the 47, Pat trying to find something. Does a good job. It didn't look like much, and he got nine. Now I think he used a timeout. Let's see if they stop it. Not yet, and finally they do. Let about two, three seconds get away, but still 49 seconds to play in the half and a second and about a yard. So great shape for Kansas State. The opportunity for three. You go to the locker room up by 21. Time out, Kansas State. That's quite a cushion. Yeah, you go up even by 17. You go up three scores on Colorado the way they've struggled offensively. You know, a two-score cushion <laughs> seems pretty sweet right now, but you go up by three scores in some fashion. You're in the driver's seat. Ron Prince has done a great job with his football team. They're, they're buying what he's selling, that's for sure. Yeah, but the scheme, as you talked about it, Kenny Freeman and Bob, the short stuff, the three-step drop, early getting him confidence. Freeman is 14 of 15 for 97 yards and a score. Uh, that, that's phenomenal. And, and all the passes that they've done with him have been quick rhythm. You know, ball out of his hand, make the make the read definitively it's clear cut for him there's no confusion he's not being confused on the pre-snap read at all after the snap of the football he knows exactly where to go with it and he gets that out of his hand very quickly 
And, and being 6'6", and standing in that pocket as tall as he does, that's a huge, huge advantage because, you know, if there's pressure in his face, he can still see over the top of it and deliver the ball with authority. Well, the balance is starting to come there now for Kansas State as we talk about Freeman. Now they have 62 yards on 20 carries on the ground. Not a great average, but they're coming off their best balance of the season. They had their win over Iowa State last week, 31 to 10, when they had 156 yards rushing and 161 yards passing. Right. And just a couple of weeks ago, both Patton and Johnson went over the century mark. First time in 10 years they've had two running backs turn that trick. Yeah. And, and yeah, two running backs, not a quarterback and a running back. That's happened a bunch with Kansas State with the with the offense that Bill Snyder ran, but two running backs doing it a special. And ball security, they didn't turn it over against Iowa State, and they have them today. Freeman, will he run for it for the first down? He'll keep it himself, and he'll get out of bounds with the first down. Stepped right inside of where he needed to go, the 37. And that'll stop the clock at the 36 with 42 seconds left to play. Now, Freeman does not have the foot speed that that uh, Bernard Jackson does but Freeman probably runs I'd say you know four eight five four nine kind of guy looking at him that's plenty fast enough because when he gets outside and keeps his eyes down the field he has the run throw option he can go either way on you it puts those outside linebackers and corners in a real sweat behind Gonzalez who still got to it and it was Jordy Nelson trying to provide the block, but because it was thrown that far behind him, and well, so he'll use a timeout, he got about four out of it. Well, Chappelle Brown deflected him. Chappelle Brown got up and, and tipped the football timeout. and rerouted it. So that's how good it's going for Kansas State. It's still a completion. Right. Now, first down line all brought to you by Overstock.com with live customer service and online price guarantee. Shopping online has never been easier. Overstock.com. Kansas State is, is, you can see their confidence growing with every possession of this football game. Last week's win was a big, big victory for this football team to beat Iowa State like they did, and they're trying to sustain it now. They had another big win earlier in the year against Oklahoma State, who has proven themselves to be a very worthy opponent in the Big 12 Conference. So Ron Pence's young football team is doing a good job. Usually close when these two teams get together. We talked about that earlier. In fact, out of the last 10 matchups, they have split. It's a five and five record. That's how close it's been between these two rivals from the Big 12 North. Right. And you know, you look at you look at uh, Freeman's numbers: 15 of 16 for 100 yards. I mean, that's that's basically six yards per attempt, and you know, seven yards uh, uh, per completion. I, I mean, it's just. That's uh, they aren't big numbers. It's proven the fact that he's not stretching the field. What he's doing is, is he's they're using their horizontal passing game in this West Coast offense. The West Coast Coast offense can attack all quadrants of the field horizontally and vertically. At this point in time, they're attacking it horizontally. At some point during this football game, we will see a double move on Colorado because the cornerbacks are starting to squat on those short passes. And they're going to go double move and try to go over the top of them. One timeout left for Freeman and the Wildcats. 34 seconds left in the half. James Johnson waits for the block. They be dragged down by right from behind, but got it inside the 30 down to the 29. Right now, they don't get anything else. They're looking at about a 47-yard field goal attempt. And Colorado's defensive football team has been on the field for a lot of snaps. Now, the weather is conducive to this type of thing. I mean, you're not going to really get tired today because of the heat or anything like that. But at some point in time, as good as they are, they're going to get tired. I mean, that's a lot. Kansas State is playing keep away from Colorado. The number of snaps and the time possession is mind boggling. Kansas State's third and final time out of the half. So they stop it for Snodgrass and a field goal attempt. He's already missed once. It hit the upright, a 47-yard try where he just hooked it. He, he just cooked it too much. Both guys, in fact. Crosby missed one as well, a 51-yarder that was way left because he hooked it. Now, Snodgrass just needs to calm down because at a mile-high elevation, 10% is what you do. And it's... The golfers right. will tell you the same thing. So it's not that long a try. Both both kickers have overswung. There's no question about it. Overswung that leg. These two teams have, have played some close football games the last couple of years here. And uh, we talked about Mason Crosby winning a game with a field goal. Let's go back to 2004. You have a 64-yard touchdown bomb. And you have Joel Klatt thrown to Ron Monte. This is the last play of the game, basically. 64-yard touchdown to win the game. 
for Colorado against Kansas State. So they have been battles back and forth. Great kickers have won it and big plays have won it, but it's been competitive over the last couple of years. And then last year, 23-20 Colorado, Mason Crosby, a 50-yarder with six seconds left in the game. So some heartbreak for Kansas State the last two seasons in 04 and 05, but now trying to pay them back and get their first win here since 2000. Final time out taken. Let's see where they put it down. Is it going to be about a 46 yard try? Yes, right at uh, 36. So it'll be out of the hold of the starting quarterback to begin the season, Dylan Meyer. Snodgrass on the year 11 of 18. At the distance, there's no doubt about that. He's hit from 52 and 53, and now a timeout has been called as he sent it up anyway and got it with plenty of distance. But they waited just in time to get it. And did they get it in time? Well, I thought Kansas State might have moved early on the edge, too. Timeout. They did get All the right. timeout in. Freeze him a little bit, ice him down. And Ron Prince with a little little sly <laughs> smile saying, okay, Coach Hawk. That's pretty – he's looking over there at Coach Hawk and saying, I like that. I like that. Use those timeouts. You know what? You know, it, why go into the locker room with timeouts that you can use? Coach Hawkins is saying, hey, you know what? Might as well, might as well use it. You're looking at the third youngest coach in Division 1A play. As Ron Prince, not even 40 years old yet. What a start on his career. And Al Groh's offensive coordinator. The last three seasons at Virginia. Very intelligent football coach, very intelligent man. And you saw, uh, I think it was Bill Cower called a timeout uh, in the NFL last Sunday, right before a game winning kick uh, uh, occurred. Uh, it, oh, oh, I, get, I think it was in the Raiders game, the Steelers Raiders game, but that's why not? Why not do that? If you have them, do it and try to ice them up a little bit. Well, Dan Hawkins left the program at Boise State. And Chris Peterson picking up right where Hawkins left off. And we look at those first-year head coaches. Well, in the Big 12, there's been 18 new coaches, only six. If Ron Prince makes his team bowl eligible today, only six have taken their teams to a bowl game in their first year Let's as go. a coach. Well, the timeout didn't make any difference. A beauty from Snodgrass with a second left Whoa. in the half. <laughs> Take care of the guy. Yeah, a little celebration. And a 17-point lead now for Kansas State. You know, I, I, I've seen I've seen guys. Here's re, here's a little celebration going to the side. Oh, miss missed on the chest bump. Down you go. I've seen kickers get injured. You know, I've seen them blow knees out when they elevate like that and hit the ground. I mean, it's crazy. Celebrations sometimes can turn out a little bit uh, a, a little bit crazy. It's just like Fannin on a high five. More embarrassing than anything else. I think it was Raheem Morris, the uh, defensive coordinator for Kansas State, that was involved in that celebration going on. So an eight-play, 30-yard drive, taking a little more than three minutes off the clock to close out the half. In fact, snaps two to one, 38 to 19 for Kansas State over Colorado with 168 yards of total offense to only 64. Very similar to what we saw with Colorado a couple of weeks ago at Oklahoma, where they didn't even have 100 yards of total offense at the break. Well, it, it, it's almost like Kansas State has played keep away. They played for two quarters and said to Colorado, you're only going to play for one. And I mean, it's, that's tough. That's a, you feel pressure now to score every time you get the football. And defensively, you feel pressure to hold them to no points every drive. That's a lot of pressure. Well, this is a mistake because now they're going to have a snap. And will they have a snap? It shows zeros on the scoreboard and actually when he puts it in play as soon as he kicks it. The clock starts and they're going to take and it can't end to the penalty so they'll kick it again. Right. Kick out of bounds five yard penalty one on time down. He might as well just squib this one. It's an untimed down. They don't take it back all the way with this. In this, in these conditions, even with the five-yard penalty with this rarefied air, you can bury it well into the end zone, like we've seen both place kickers do there. That was a case once again of overswinging. I mean, trying to kill it on the kickoff, overswung and and pulled it to the left. Just hit it like you normally do. Well, Snodgrass is now going to defer to Parker as Parker, Jared Parker, his backup from Ankeny, Iowa. 
Sophomore is going to take over. Let's see if they do put it on the ground, though. I, I wouldn't even try to kick it out of the end zone. I just squib it. Make sure there wasn't the chance for the long return. We're going on side. And Parker will cover it himself. And he'll get it because he did go 10 yards, and that'll do it. <laughs> I knew there was a reason Parker was in there. <laughs> so a very strong first half for Ron Prince and the Wildcats as we join Jim Knox. Knoxie. All right, thank you, Joel. Coach, you said a big key in this game, balance. You guys are doing an excellent job running and throwing the football. Well, I think that just has to be who we are, and the kids are doing a really good job of identifying all the things that Colorado can do on defense. As you can see, this number 53, he's really something. How about your defense right now holding Colorado at offense just a total of 64 yards? We're getting a really good effort from him, and, you know, the turnovers and those kind of things help. So I'm really pleased with our defensive effort for sure. Thanks for the time, Coach. Thank you. Right now, let's head to the studio on Joel and Mike Goldberg and the rest of the guys. Mike. Jim Knox, thank you very much. Ron Prince, very impressed with the performance of his team so far today. Very, very, a big man. That's big. a big man. He can take you down. Welcome wow. to the College Football Saturday Halftime Report. Mike Goldberg, DeMarco Farr, Billy Ray Smith. That is correct, Billy Ray Smith. We spotlight in a moment the best of the BCS as the race to the desert and the BCS National Championship game on Fox continues. All that and so much more coming up on the College Football Saturday Halftime Report. Here's a heads up for all you middle schoolers out there. The Big 12 Conference has teamed up with the College Board to offer this cool new program called College Ed. It's designed to encourage middle school students like us and our parents to start prepping for college now. But College Ed is just one of the ways in which the Big 12 supports education in our local communities. Because the Big 12 believes every student deserves a chance to pursue his or her dreams. Together, we're better. The Big 12 Conference. Welcome back to the College Football Saturday Halftime Report. 17-0 Wildcats. At the break, Leon Patton, 15 yards for the score. That made it 7-0. All Wildcats in the first half in Boulder, Colorado. From Boulder to the Horseshoe, Columbus, Ohio. Number one, Ohio State at Illinois. Opening possession. Making a great impression is the industrial strength running back, Chris Wells, just brutalizing his way into the end zone for the touchdown. And then the mainstay, Antonio Pittman. Yep, just big offensive line, just moved those guys out of the way, paved the way for another touchdown. 17 nothing at the break. Number two, Michigan, hosting the Ball State Cardinals. Mike Hart for the touchdown. You see the surge up front? Just knock them all in the end zone. Hart showing some toughness. Speaking of a surge, Ball State came surging back. Absolutely. Find the one-on-one. -on -one and hey, hey, look, you can't coach speed. I don't care how good Michigan is. One-on-one. -on -one, if he's faster than you, he's going to get in the end zone. Cardinals down by eight, fourth and goal. Didn't and the see, pass goes incomplete. Didn't we see that last week against yeah, USC? Yeah, but that was on the two-point oh, conversion. Yeah. <laughs> and the former assistant, Brady Hope, gave his old boss a scare. Number four, Florida at Vanderbilt. All oh, Chris Leak today. Oh, Vandy has double coverage on Dallas Baker, but it's not real tight double coverage. That's a touchdown for Florida. Dallas Baker, seven catches, 135 yards and a touchdown. Leak keeps it himself. Florida wins 25 to 19. Number six, Auburn. They couldn't beat Arkansas State, so they'll take or they couldn't beat Arkansas. Fox so on the right. Arkansas State. State. I love it. Nice play fake. Catches everybody into the end zone. I love it. Whenever you catch that defense over pursuing, they can't recover. And then <laughs> Superman over the top. Looking good. Auburn rolling. Auburn has never lost to a Sun Belt Conference team. Notre Dame leading the North Carolina Tar Heels 38 to 26 in the game. Jeff Samarja. Gets the touchdown pass to break the tie with Derek Mays. Samarja now the all-time career leader in touchdown passes received for a wide receiver with the Irish. Number 17, LSU. At number 11, Tennessee, LSU strikes first. My favorite quarterback, Jamarcus Russell. Did you see that? I wish we could rewind that. That pass got there in like a half a second. What a strong arm. Eric Ainge out, Jonathan Crompton in. The big meet going downfield. Let me tell you, he's underrated. Watch out for the big meet. Robert Meacham, the man. Tennessee has been very good at home against LSU. In two weeks, it is number one against number two. Ohio State against Michigan. Ohio State cruising Michigan. 
Uh, challenged a little bit today, but all eyes are focused on the horseshoe. Wait a second. I heard my big buddy here That's talking right. about that Michigan defense giving up 26 points to Ball State. <laughs> oh, 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 how how can away. that be? Are you really <laughs> expecting a game with Ohio State if you're going to give up 26 points to Ball State? Come on, DeMarco. Absolutely. If I'm Michigan, what am I looking at? I'm looking at Ohio State. I'm not looking at Ball State. They get, got the job done. They still won. When one plays two, one will be gone. It'll be Michigan winning. <laughs> I've never liked you more. I've never liked you less. So I just like you all to know that. I do know this that everyone around Kansas State liked the first half, and Colorado still can't score. Oh, and that's why too many mistakes. 17 0 at the break, much more still ahead. Welcome back to the College Football Saturday Halftime Report. Since 96, K-State has won 23 conference road games. That's tied for third best in the Big 12. They're well on their way to a 24th conference road game victory. Can USC rebound? You'll find out right here on FSN. You saw them go down last week to Oregon State. You will see them live, available in high definition. Number eight, USC at Stanford. That is game three of our triple header today on FSN. We'll wrap, we'll wrap up the College Football Saturday Halftime Report. Welcome back to the College Football Saturday Halftime Report. Good kick, bad celebration for Jeff Snodgrass. This is Jeff. Yeah, just do that. Don't do this. That's not good. Still, the kick was. It's 17 to nothing at the break. Let's go back to the Big Ten. Number 16, Wisconsin, entertaining Penn State. Tied at three, Goldie, and it's John Stocko. Seems like he's been in school there for about 10 years. Finds Paul Hubbard for the touchdown, and Joe Paul is angry. Yeah, and Joe Paul would be injured on this play. Joe Paul flew back to State College ahead of the team. He will have an MRI on that left leg on Sunday or Monday. We wish the 79-year-old head coach well. Number 22, Oregon. Entertaining the Huskies. Yeah, it's punt and cover. Punt and cover. No, great assignment returned by the Oregon Ducks here. Splitting the team, getting in the end zone. Whoop. Can't recover from such a team. Such Oregon down. not beating your uh, Huskies three straight years since 28 to 31. Upset alert. Tuscaloosa, Alabama, so Mississippi State. Big interception here by Quentin Culbertson. He'll take you to the end zone. Sylvester Groom, the former All-American in Alabama, beats his alma mater for the first time. Mississippi State snaps a 23-game SEC road losing streak. Back to our game, guys, K-State, NCU. Now, Joel Myers, Dave Lapham talked throughout the first half that Ron Prince is going to have Kansas State eligible, bowl eligible, for the first time since 2003. You know, I asked Ron Prince that same question on the phone. He said he didn't want to hear about it. He doesn't want to talk about it. It's about a body of work. It's about the next victory. <laughs> But I said, hey, what's it like following a legend? He said, look, I'm not trying to separate myself from Snyder. I'm trying to build on what he did. So Ron Prince, right guy for the job. Well, listen, I think he also had a great staff. James Franklin, the offensive coordinator and quarterback's coach. What a job he has done with this young freshman quarterback. Is Josh Freeman just spectacular? Six foot six, 240 pounds, and he is absolutely running that offense to perfection today. Last time Kansas State was bowl eligible, they went to the Fiesta Bowl in 2003 with El Roberson and Darren Sproles. And Good guess team. what, DeMarco? Yeah. They lost to Ohio State. <laughs> Just wanted to let you know that. This has been a good first sometimes. Kansas State leads 17 0. This has been the College Football Saturday Halftime Report. Enjoy the second half. Are you ready? Value. Respected. Tradition. We are K State. Our nationally ranked academic programs and approachable faculty will take you beyond the classroom. Study abroad, leadership, cutting edge research, a vibrant campus life. Be part of the K-State family. Are you ready? College football Saturday presented by Kia Sarah continues at the half at Folsom Field. Kansas State bowl eligible with a win today all over Colorado by 17 at the break. And welcome back once again, Joel Myers, along with Dave Lapham and Jim Knox. Total domination by Kansas State. They 10 to 3 first downs, but maybe more significant for down the road, the play of Josh Freeman, a guy over the last three, four weeks, he's really grown. Yeah, he really has. And, and you see it two yards rushing on 11 attempts for Colorado. Third downs. Colorado is, uh, hasn't converted one. Kansas State, two out of every three, 67%. Time of possession, almost a nine minute advantage for Kansas State. I mean, all those numbers reflect the score being 17 0. And, and when you look at Josh Freeman in the first half, 
15 of 16 for 100 yards, and he threw a touchdown pass. And a lot of his passes were of this variety. The outside quadrant of the football oh, field, short, controlled passing game, almost like long laterals, almost like an extension of the running game, just possession passing. Then they extended a little bit, got him out of pocket on a naked bootleg, and he hits figures for his touchdown. Josh Freeman had nine interceptions before he threw a touchdown pass. Had a touchdown pass last week against Iowa State, his first of the season with no interceptions. Has a touchdown pass in the first half here against Colorado with no interceptions. This young man is growing before our very eyes. Now is there going to be a second half letdown for Kansas State? Are they going to all of a sudden say, well, 17, it's probably enough? Do they sit on it? We'll find out at least in a couple of minutes because Colorado is going to have the ball. They won the toss to Ferg, took their option for the second half as Snodgrass is going to kick it away. It'll be Terry Washington. And the defensive back will bring it back from the goal line. He's got a lane, but tripped himself up. Going across the 20 to the 22. So another one, another long field for Colorado to start the second half. Let's see if they can do a little bit more with the ground game. And uh, Kansas State was offsides on the kickoff. Covering the kick, it looks like, by the position of the flag. Offside on the kicking team, number 27. Five yard penalty, re kick. Without a doubt. They need anything they can get right now, and especially a home run ball on a kick return. Well, they, they do. They have to eat into this three score lead. Colorado is averaging just over 14 points a game. Again, they have not scored an offensive touchdown in 10 quarters now, two and a half games. And uh, they've only scored 11 offensive touchdowns in nine and a half games. Well, now that he's broken away from Ralphie momentarily, let's check in with Jim Knox. There we go. Thank you, Joel. Just got through talking to Dan Hawkins. He said, different week, same story. They got to generate something on offense. He would like to throw more here in the second half. We'll see what happens here. Also a little disappointed as defense. They missed a couple of big tackles, he thought. So we'll see how they'll do here in the second half, guys. Jim, we had a report you were running with Ralphie. Is that true? Actually, I was about to until Coach Hawkins came down. I, I traded Coach Hawkins in for Ralphie. That's a good trade, Doxie. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, that's a good that's a good call. I agree with I, I agree with what Coach said, though. You know, the missed tackle by Ryan Walters on the first touchdown run. There were some uncharacteristically missed tackles in the secondary. Down the middle it goes. It'll be Washington on the ground, though. Picks it up at about the five and good coverage down the field. Kansas State, first one down there. It's going to be Antoine Moore, the linebacker. Ponca City, Oklahoma, only a sophomore. First half possessions, not a pretty sight play-wise for Colorado. No, not at all. And you can see this This was the only scoring opportunity. They could not quite convert on, the, on a makeable field goal situation then and the number of plays you know you, uh, one 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 eight play drive that ended on uh on, they went for it on four downs and only generating 39 yards on that longest play drive of the first half you know it's going bad when you lose eight yards and you make them kick it again hugh charles bouncing walker caught up with him and got him as he crossed the 18 out to the 19 so a gain of five but they initially had her to the 22 made right. him kick it over get it back at the 14 just not your day. Well, and as the old saying goes, when it rains, it pours. Here in Boulder, I need a lot of raincoats and a lot of umbrellas because it is pouring. All season. I mean, it's been a tough. These are the times that try men's souls when you're a football player. It's easy, an easy game when you're 8-1. It's a tough game when you're 1-8. and Bernard Jackson, a junior from Corona, California, that quarterback, and running it again, takes on. The defensive back on the outside as he got together with Byron Garvin, the junior from Miramar, Florida. Pretty good collision. You know, you can see the effort still being given by Colorado. This football team is not going to quit on Coach Hawk. And, and during the course of the week, he made a statement. You see, you see B Jack lowering his shoulder pads, getting the extra yards. Bear crawl, stadium steps, attitude reinforcement, not adjustment. He's saying that these guys get it, but he just wanted to make sure they still understood the message. We're going to finish this season. We're going to play all three games, every snap hard in all three games. Yeah, they convert a yard. It'll be their first third down conversion, 0 for 4 so far. Deep single, Hugh Charles. And breaking the tackle, he's got it. He got away from Zach Dials, the middle linebacker, had him right at the point of attack. 
So finally they convert and only their fourth first down to the game. Zach Dial's is upset, but you know what? When you're a Big 12 running back and he came off the block, you're supposed to make the first guy miss. Most of the good running backs get their eyes to the second guy because they know they're going to try to make the first guy miss. First guy coming off a block should not be able to tackle him for less than a yard on that particular play, and he didn't. Williams, one wide receiver, Barnett the other, and movement flinch. up front. Yep, flinch at the tight end, at the right tackle position. Full start, 76 offense, five yard penalty, first down. Big, big Brock Unruh, or excuse me, I, it's for Colorado, my bad, it's Devin Head. <laughs> It'll be a mark off of five with 12.40 to play. So now first and 15. Harris with time, and Jackson rather finds Williams. Well, he had a couple of long completions the first half. He was five of eight. He had a bit stride that time, and it's a game of 24. It's kind of like all or nothing at all. They have not had many short games. Well, the middle of the field in cover two is, is what is vulnerable. And the, and the safety split in the middle of the field was open, and, and Williams ran a nice route and settled into the middle of that, that uh, zone defense and made a nice play. Good throw by Bernard Jackson. Jackson with the completion. Now six of nine, 86 yards. You got Holiday in there. They're stronger back physically. Breaks the tackle. And he's got a first down. Only a second carry of the game. He's fresh. 12 on the game for Mel Holiday, the senior from Omaha. Well, he got Kansas State over pursuing. The play, the point of attack was between the left guard and left tackle. He broke it all the way back outside the right tackle. Here's where the play was initially designed. Watch him break it back. And over pursuing is Kansas State. And as a result, Holiday gets to the edge with his speed and picks up a nice game. Split in the backfield, give it to the wide receiver Williams. Williams on a roll over to the left side. And easy yardage. Give him about four, almost five. It'll be second down. And five or six on first down is a big play for this offense today. Exactly. Keep him on schedule and watch Byron Ellis, number 27, make the block right there. Nice block by Byron Ellis, getting one on the ground and allowing his receiver, Patrick Williams, to get to the perimeter for those yards. Three first downs on this drive alone, starting back at their own 14. Colorado's equal their entire output of the first half with three first downs of the first 30 minutes of play. Here's the tight end. Jackson out of the edge, gets away from Archer. He's got the first down. And avoided the punishment as Archer was over there and Garvin. And, and Jackson was on the perimeter trying to direct gears. And, and, and he was saying to Gear, go ahead and, and, and make the block. Make the block for him. Watch him start to point. Okay, pick up Archer. Well, he freezes Archer a little bit by doing the pointing, and he just takes it outside the, the chains for the first down. Nice job in space again by Bernard Jackson. Kansas State's fear of him on the outside third of the field is legitimate. Seven plays, 55 yards on this drive already, and that's the longest drive. Quarterback draw, Jackson up the middle, look out. He's got another first down inside the 19. He's a dynamite athlete. Oh, yeah. It's just he's a better runner right now than thrower. And Kyle Williams, the big safety, who's the thumper for Kansas State in the secondary, he and Bernard Jackson had some serious contact. And, and Bernard Jackson was not going to back down from Williams at all. Straight line, and Williams makes the hit, and Jackson says, I'm taking him. And I'm going to get extra yards after that initial contact. Maybe finish that run well. So from their own 14, drive alive and well all the way to the 19 of Kansas State. In the red zone officially for the first time today. Jackson on a long count with Byron Ellis, his single. He'll keep it himself, and he won't go anywhere. Eccles. It was Eccles, Quentin Eccles, mm. on the sack, the senior from Fort Worth. He was all over Jackson right after the play fake. Jackson got up a little woozy. I mean, he grabs his left arm a little bit. And now, you know, he's, he's, he's hurting a little bit. That was a big hit by Eccles. And that's not what you want to do in the red zone. You don't want to take a sack. You don't want to turn the football over. 
Quentin Eccles makes it makes a big play, a little play action fake, and Eccles is right there and unloads on Bernard Jackson. In the first half, Kansas State got in the red zone two times and scored two touchdowns. Good execution. Colorado doesn't get in the red zone for the first time until the third quarter. How will they finish this red zone drive? Jackson out of the gun, just trying to gather himself. You're right. He took a big hit that time. Hugh Charles adjusting nicely. And on his back, the linebacker, Reggie Walker, he caught up with him. He got the loss back, the gain of about five after the sack of five. And our Dr. Pepper, walk on student athlete, Brian Daniels. Look at this. Academic Heisman Award finals. He's won a 16 finalist for the Dratty Award, which is the academic Heisman for football players. 3.53 GPA in finance. Now that's that's a tough curriculum, and he he has time management figured out. All that study, all that practice time, sharp kid. 68 yards on this drive, Dave. Only 64 the entire first half. Now it's going to be third and ten, and they convert. Jackson with nice. time over the middle. Sprague is there, and check that. The catch instead of spray Cody Crawford. The sophomore from Torrey Pines High School in San Diego. First and goal. Walk on, former walk on, ran a great route. Bernard Jackson threw a Roger Clemens fastball. This ball is great. I mean, it's on the money. And, and the pass protection gives him a lane to throw the football. I mean, he his vision was totally unimpaired. A perfect throwing lane, and he delivered a fastball on the money. Long drive, time consuming as well. Eight out of nine left in the third. Holiday. And boy, it looked like he was going to get nothing, and he still got about a yard and a half, almost two. Yeah, Tough kid. Nice finish on that run. I mean, he was not going to quit. Kept those big legs churning. You know, you keep grinding those legs, and good things are going to happen. And Kansas State does a pretty good job at the line of scrimmage at the point of attack, but Holiday says no. I'm getting something out of this. I'm not going to get stopped for no game. Right outside of the two, it'll be second and goal. Holiday staying in the backfield. Line up the tight end in front of him, offset. Jackson throwing for it, and it's deflected. And what else is new? Rob Jackson, like Ian Campbell, they have been right in on the quarterback all day. Yep, and, and you know, they were trying to get Jackson cut to the ground. You know, you get the defensive end on the ground, you can throw the ball over his head. Watch what happens here. Try to get him cut by the back's going to try to cut him, but it's too late. He's already airborne, and he gets a, a piece of the football. The back couldn't get up to him quick quick enough to get him on the ground before he got his hands up there in the passing lane. Looked like it saved the score because Tyson DeVry had some space. I agree. It looks like it's a touchdown. Holiday in the eye. Jackson to Holiday, and he won't get there. Oh, Kansas State close in a hurry right inside the two. Well, what is, what is Coach, was over there. What, what does Coach Hawk do? Do you settle for the field goal? Do you get points out of it? You're down three scores. Or do you try to punch it in for the touchdown? I don't really Considering get a all the factors. And, and I'll tell you, two, two, two guys, two guys for one blocker. And, and he, if he takes the inside, inside white jersey, he may have a shot at it, but... Kansas State out there doing a good job inside the five-yard line. The red zone has been the twilight zone for Colorado all year. Let's see what happens on this big fourth down play. They're one for ten on fourth downs this season. This is the fourth and goal inside the two. Jackson keeps it, doesn't get there. Nope. Stuffed it right at the one. So Kansas State stops him for the second time today on a fourth down. And that means a 15-play, 86-yard drive. That's absolutely nothing. That's that's a shame. 15 plays and you come up empty. Rod Prince and his sideline going crazy. All kinds of kudos for the defense. They come off the football field. Great goal line stand. College football on FSN presented by Cell Phone Karma. It's real. Kia Zero Wireless reminds you to dial responsibly. Also brought to you in part by Famous Bowls from KFC. Aflac. And Dr. Pepper. 23 flavors that add up to one bowl taste. Dr. Pepper, there's more to it.
Well, it's back at the one yard line as we welcome you back to beautiful Boulder, Colorado. And it really is one of the classic spots in our country. November 4th, not too shabby. Football weather, temperature in the mid 50s. And on the quick out, it's figures. And he's going to get close to a first down. He had a cushion on Terry Washington. He's got it right across the 10, needed to go to the 11. It'll be second and short. That's the kind of confidence now they have in Josh Freeman. Absolutely. How much has he grown? Well, James Franklin and Ron Prince say, you know, we trust you're not going to put our football team in jeopardy, young man. You've done a good job of ball security the entire half. You've only had one incompletion that could have arguably been pass interference. We're going to let you throw the football out of the end zone. Could have been. Could have been pass interference. First down, James Johnson spinning across the 18 out to the 19. Now, if you really want to deflate an opponent, you're already up by 17. Go 99 and take about eight minutes off the clock. Yeah, and that's the thing. The, the clock is the enemy of Colorado. And when they went 15 plays and came up empty, they took seven, eight minutes off the clock and, and made it more of an enemy. It's an ally for Ron Prince and his team, an enemy for Coach Hawk and his team. And now Ron Prince is going to gobble clock. And if he can score more points, that's bonus. But right now, he's thinking tick, 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 melt, melt, melt. James Johnson. Penetration to the backfield. He did a good job just to get back to the line. And then took a shot going down the line. As he's put down. And it was that against Washington once again. Their senior from Herrero, Louisiana. Well, this is the uh, the same play, same type of play they scored the touchdown on. This time they pulled the center and left guard. And, and, and that's a difficult thing to do, to snap the, the ball to the quarterback and then pull and lead the run out in front. And John, but Jordan Bedore is doing an outstanding job of that. The first center that I ever saw do it was the great Damani Dawson, the Pittsburgh Steelers. And now a lot of centers at, at all levels are doing it. Second and 10. Johnson trying to get the boundary. And once he cut it back, the congestion of the flow back his way. So a loss of a couple of yards, but the clock moving against Colorado. Well, you, you look at Colorado on that play, Joel. They had 11 guys running to the football. Here comes the center and tackle pulling again, trying to move it laterally. Look at how many gold jerseys will end up around the play. Everybody's still hustling to the ball. Nobody getting cut on the, on, off the, their feet. Nobody's getting cut in half, taken to the ground. Colorado's defense is still giving a lot of effort out there. It's third and a bunch during that prevent defense again. Everybody's more than 10 yards away from the line of scrimmage. Look at them out. K-State, six of nine of the third downs. Johnson on the screen. Did he do it on his own because he didn't have much blocking? He almost did it. He's a yard and a half shy. They'll punt the football, but Johnson almost manufactured the first down. And he took a shot as he comes off the field. He took a shot up in that chest cavity area. You know, you take it up in the sternum and in the chest, and you got Colorado only rushing three, and they got eight eight back, and then they're going to going to rally up to the football, and you can get peppered a little bit. He took some shots. Yeah, he's he's in pain. The young man from Port Arthur, Texas. You hate to see that. As McBride is going to wait for the punt. Tim Rarrow will get it and hit it near the 20. And again, great hang time. McBride though. Good field position for Colorado. Now can they capitalize because they're running out of time possession wise. How many more times can they get the football? Three score game with 3.58 to play in the third. The game face. Everyone is different. Some are powerful, some are focused, and some are calm in any situation. Big 12 athletes never lose their game faces. They travel with them throughout their lives. You see them on doctors performing surgery, lawyers presenting arguments, and on scientists making discoveries. The game face is how champions prepare for a challenge, no matter the arena. Commanding 17 to nothing lead for the Wildcats of Kansas State Bowl, eligible with a victory today. 358 left of the third. Ah, flag trivia time. Yes, sir. Yeah. Can you tell us the two Colorado players to pass and rush for 2,000 yards in their respective careers? One of them's got to be Slash, Cordell Stewart. Kidding me? I think he did that for Pittsburgh. Easy. <laughs> a layup, a slam dunk. Hugh Charles breaking a tackle out of the backfield. Man, close to 10. He's right at the first down marker. It's the best field position to start a drive for Colorado. 
at their own 36. Now close to the 46, but they'll be shy of a first down by about a half a yard. And it, this is uh, well executed, just inside zone. Nothing fancy. You see the linebacker get cut. And uh, that's a good job, offensive line getting up to that linebacker level. And, and when you take Zach Dials off his feet, you have a cutback lane for Hugh Charles to take advantage of. On second, man less than one. Jackson stumbles into the handoff, and it pays off. Charles dances his way up the middle, down to the 43. Bernard Jackson almost fell down, giving it to him. And, and, and you know what? It's a good job by offensive coordinator Mark Helfrich, who said, hey, they didn't stop running up the gut on, on the first the rush, so let's do it again. Let's run it until they stop it. And again, good job. The interior of the offensive line moving people around and getting at the linebacker level and, and, and doing a good job of, of uh, securing the blocks and sustaining blocks at the linebacker level. They've got to get points out of this drive. The inside of three minutes left. Holiday in there, slamming his way into the secondary. Look out. Will they catch him inside the 20? They've got an angle on him. Step arms his way, and he's out of bounds. Inside the five. Let's see where they spot it. Probably around the two. Put it just at the three. So Holiday with a huge run. The longest run this year for Colorado, in fact. It's 40 yards. Again, right up the gut, doing a good job to, to get the linebackers consumed. Urkel can't make the Urker can't make the play at the secondary level and definitely out of bounds, but nice job. Nice job of blocking. Urker misses, and it's see you later. But a touchdown saving tackle executed right there by Devin Anderson. Holiday's going to stay on the field. Holiday again up the middle. And Archer, after you slow down, Archer made sure that he didn't get anything extra. Well, I'll tell you what, Kansas State's defensive line in these goal line snaps has been formidable. They have they have reestablished the line of scrimmage backwards, led by Eccles. He's the bowling ball with legs, the shot put with legs, the low center of gravity, six feet tall, over 300 pounds. To get under his pads, you have to come off on your kneecaps. You have to crawl off the football. And, and, and he has a nice quickness, and he gets it going backwards. And, and uh, defensive coordinator Raheem Morris says, give me another one of those goal line stands like last time. Second and goal from the three. Jackson looking for the tight end. Not available, and he'll throw it away. Good play. Smart play. He yep. wanted to go to Dan Gatch, the senior from Austin, Minnesota. That was the design, but it was taken away. And, and in the red zone, you don't put your team in jeopardy. You don't take a sack to lose yards, and you don't turn it over. You don't throw an interception. You live for another down. And, and you have to give Kansas State credit. They plastered everything. They were there on every receiver in the back line of the end zone. And, and Jackson realized, he said, I'm not going to risk it. I'm going to live for third down, see what we can do, because it's four down territory again, just like it was the other time. By the way, the running game is picked up in the second half. Now, Colorado has more yardage you know, overall in Kansas State, but nothing to show for it. Jackson in trouble. Dives himself, and he's in. Touchdown, Colorado. That was the sixth rush of the day on third down, and that one a three-yarder to pay dirt. They only had 11 yards in their first five third down rushes. But that three-yard rush put him on the scoreboard. And that's that's what a, a mobile quarterback can do. Extend the play, nothing there, and tuck it and go. And Bernard Jackson's very comfortable when he sees real estate between himself and the goal line that he can cross the goal line before the defense can rally and react to him. In this 10th game of the season, this is only the 12th extra point try of the year for Mason Crosby. Incredible. <laughs> They only have now 12 touchdowns from the offense. Right. It's unreal. Minute 48 to play in the third. Colorado with some life back in it. Only down by 10. College football Saturday on FSN. All presented by Kia Sierra back in Boulder, Colorado. What do you know? We've got a game going. Minute 48 to play. And Colorado looks like a different team offensively, especially on the ground, Dave. And, and you have to give credit to the Colorado defense for hanging in there. Keep sawing wood, keep after it, keep giving the offense opportunities.
and the offense has come out in the second half and played a lot better, put together a couple of big drives. Crosby kicks it away. Figures will stay right there with the over-the-shoulder catch. Offside again is Kansas State covering the kickoff. I mean, is Colorado covering the kickoff? This is the second offside. We've had one each covering kickoffs. Just take it to the 20. <laughs> I mean, Crosby is going to kick it into the end zone again, isn't he? Yeah, you would think. You, you know what I might do, though, is have him just kick it about a million miles hang time and try to keep him inside the 20. Offside. They may decline it. Colorado on the kickoff. They're going to make him kick Five it Five yards, first down. See, okay, if you so ever wanted to, the element of surprise, the onside kick right now, because they're backpedaling, getting ready for a return. Right. Well, they, they took the penalty. They took the penalty after the conclusion of the uh, of the kick. All right. So which is going, something they can do. Right. Their and, option. And they chose that. They took the option to take the five yard penalty. So Kansas State is going to take the football at the 25 because as we've talked about with Mason Crosby, that's five yards better than you're going to get anyway. Well, we talked about the shot that James Johnson took. So now Leon Patton, a true freshman in there is Josh Freeman on a roll. Sends it downfield and boy did he catch Gonzalez in stride. What a throw. Big yardage all the way to the 48. A gain of 27. Josh Freeman is becoming a Big 12 quarterback before our very eyes. Get him out of pocket. Naked bootleg once again. All the run action to the left. The same play they, th they scored the touchdown pass on. But instead of figures, this time they go to Gonzalez. Freeman has been outstanding on the naked bootleg, making the proper read and delivering the football accurately down the field. He is now 18 of 19 for 146 yards. I don't care if he's dinking him and dunking him for the most part. That's impressive for a true freshman. Pat breaking tackles. And he won't go down. Wow. There he's into the secondary. A stiff arm away from a touchdown, and he's down inside the 15. All the way inside the 14. What an effort by Leon Pat out of Cedar Hill, Texas. 5 7 185. And Ron Prince is enthusiastic and excited, and I would be too. Look at the answer his football team has given to him. I mean, breaking tackles, Pat. Colorado is an excellent tackling football team, but the low center of gravity, five foot seven, and those strong legs with the lower body make him very, very difficult to tackle. He doesn't give you a whole lot of hitting surface, and he hides from him and then bursts on you. And if I'm Ron Prince, I love the response of my football team. Colorado scored, two plays later, my offense is right back in the red zone answering. They're inside the 15, big hole for Patton again. Runs into his own blocker. The offensive lineman on that side, Brock Unruh. And he still gets it down about the 11, a gain of three. Final minute of the third, and a third owned by Colorado. But they're still down by 10 with K-State driving. Well, it's an important drive for Kansas State. They want to be bowl bound. Coach Hawk's team got some momentum with that touchdown drive. 10-point game. Kansas State says, uh, uh we're not going to let you back in it. We're going to go right back after it. Patton again, they pull the offensive lineman. Doesn't make any difference, though. And unfortunately, the offensive lineman that pulled Caleb Handy is still down. Yeah, he, he's slow to get up, but he, he is getting to his feet, which is a good sign. And Johnson's checking back into the football game, which is a good sign as well. Giving Patton a little breather. A little general works his way to the sideline. And, and yeah, now you get more real estate. You got real estate in the uh, in the hook on the helmet there. Well, the third down of the game for the Colorado defense is coming up when we return with the first snap of the fourth because if they can hold them to three, they still have a shot over the final 15 minutes of regulation. And keep it manageable. After three, though, Kansas State by 10. The start of the fourth, and it's time for our Ruby Tuesday game summary. Well, the third belong to the Colorado Buffaloes, but the game has belonged to Josh Freeman. Oh, well, sure has. 18 of 19. Are you kidding me? That's hard to do on air. If there's nobody one. even in coverage, it's hard to complete 18 of 19. Yep. He did it today. Freeman in the first snap of the fourth, looking at a third, a little more than six. He has seven of eight passing on third downs. They're six of ten as a team. Flood the right side. Freeman in trouble. And over his shoots. Pushki is tied in. Not a bad idea, though, because only Pushki was going to get it if anybody did. 
Boy, how many in a row did he complete? Because the incompletion was early in the game. Right. We thought it was pass interference, but he must have completed, I don't know, I'd say 14 or 15 in a row before he threw that incompletion. And they, and they did. Uh, Colorado rose up and held it to nothing more than a field goal opportunity by Snodgrass. Snodgrass has got a 46-yarder. He had the upright on a 47-yard attempt. He's been hooking it today. And this is going to be a short one, a 27-yarder. Got to hook it inside, and he did beautifully. Wish I had that draw. So a 27-yard field goal by Snodgrass. 12 seconds into the fourth, and Wildcats go back up by 13 while we head downstairs to Jim Knox. Knoxie? All right, Joe, the good news on that drive, Javens Johnson, the fine running back for K-State, back in the game, that last play. Really got hit hard in the chest. Leon Patton walked over to him and said, are you all right? He shook his head, but he remained on the bench for a couple of plays, gathered, it, gathered his thoughts, and got back in. Had a nice block in the last play, guys. Sure did, Knoxie. And he's, uh, I, I, there's no way he's going to come out of this football game. This football game means a bowl game. And uh, he's he's going to, last two weeks in a row, he's had 100 yards rushing. He's not going to spit the bit. He's not going to give up an opportunity because he knows it's competitive. And he knows if he gives Leon Patton a chance, Leon Patton is going to take full advantage. So even though they're friends, it's a nice rivalry competition. Competition breeds excellence. And right now they're getting a lot of good things out of those running backs. And they're, they're young. One's a junior college transfer. One's a true freshman. And what an answer for K-State after giving up their only points of the day defensively. K-State came right back with a six-play, 65-yard drive, got points out of it. Yep, that is, that's, that's meaningful. Ron Prince likes what he's seeing. His football team, and particularly his true freshman quarterback, growing up. Freeman seems more than 6'6", now he seems like he's 7'6". Parker kicks it away over to the near side, a deep one as well, over the head of Terry Washington. So Colorado down by 13 points. We'll have it first and 10 at their own 20. Well, now the heat's going to be on Bernard Jackson once again. It's only a two-score game, though. And that's the key because they, you'd have to think they have a minimum of two, if not three, possessions left in this contest. And another, another streak that was broken was uh, Colorado not scoring an offensive touchdown for 10 quarters. First down line brought to you by Overstock.com. Whether you order a big screen TV or a comfy chair, all ships for 295. Shop and save at Overstock.com. Holiday, he has been a workaholic in the third. It continues early in the fourth. He's got seven on first down. And it's right between the tackles. It's nothing fancy. You know, the coaching staff saying to the offensive line, look, we're going to run inside zone. Come off the football, get your blocks, get somebody up to that linebacker level, get a hat on that level, and let's see if we can have our running backs make a safety miss. And that's what they're doing for Coach Hawk. Colorado rushing on eight of their nine first down plays so far in the second half, so it's trying to pound it down. It's been successful. Hugh Charles back in, makes a miss, look out. Good job by Charles, just sliding away for the pursuit. He's got it up to the 38-yard line, so they are getting it done on the ground. And the only negative, it's taking a lot of time. Right, that's not booing, that's the crowd chanting Hugh for Hugh Charles. They run a little a little counter play, and they do a nice job. They pull the, pull the lineman to the backside tight end. Hugh Charles shows good vision and patience and makes a couple of cuts, and he makes them very decisively. Holiday or make it. Yes, it is Holiday on the counter, but it's a play fake for Jackson. Plenty of time on the bullet, and the comeback is dropped by Spray. So it's going to be second and ten. Now nine games into this season, Colorado has been allergic to the end zone. Usually, your personality is going to be true throughout the course of the year. Right. They only average 14 points a game. They're still stuck on seven, Dave. It's difficult for this team to get more than 14 a contest. Yeah, it really is. And, and when you throw on first down, when you're struggling offensively, you have to complete it. And Dusty Sprague, it, it should be second and two or three. Instead, it's second and ten, and those kill you. Jackson keeps it himself. Look, he's got oh, okay. it. The secondary, he's on his way. Inside the 30. Nobody will catch him. Touchdown, Colorado. 62 yards for Bernard Jackson, who sold the play fake, and the belly dive to Bell Holiday. Well, and that's the play that had been hurting Kansas State, pounding the ball up the middle. So you run a complimentary play off that. You fake pounding the ball up the middle. 
and the offensive line have been handling things. So you fake that, you hold the football, and you come out the back door, and you get nice blocking on the edge, and you make people miss, miss tackles, and you have speed on that outside third of the football field that Kansas State was worried about. And Bernard Jackson took it to the house. Crosby for the point after 12 of 12 in that category. Make it 13 of 13. And we do have a game at Folsom Field. And we have a penalty flag. We have a flag on the uh, on the extra point. Let's see what this flag's about. Although we like the music, we'll keep it right here momentarily. Let's see who the options belong to. I wonder Colorado. If, I wonder if Kansas State lined up off sides when they were trying to block the extra point. Well, let's remind everybody. Offside. They on did. The defense. They did. Penalties declined. Point is good. Yep. Well, Kansas State has to have it. It's Texas at home, and then on the road, the final week of the season, in Lawrence against their arch rivals, the Jayhawks. They got to take care of business today in Boulder. With the way it stood at halftime, 17 to nothing, Kansas State. No way you could read and anticipate it was going to be this tight down the stretch. We've got ourselves a ball game. 2014 K State. We'll get it back with 13 26 to play, but the momentum belongs to Colorado on our Accu scoring drive. Didn't take a long time, did it? And that's the longest rush of the year. Right, and the longest rush of the year prior to that was set by Holiday, so they've had some breakout runs the Buffaloes have today. Regardless if it's downwind or not, Crosby <laughs> on his home field, thin air, mile high in Boulder, out of the end zone, so Kansas State gets it at the 20. Now, they have to maintain the personality they've had all day. Well, they, they have to answer. Just like they have after Colorado scores, Kansas State has to answer again. And they've done it the last couple of times. They, watching Crosby kick, though, not only the, the distance, the hang time, it's majestic, and Bernard Jackson happy about that 60-yard-plus uh, run for the touchdown. Made a couple of people miss. And once he got in the open space, bye-bye. It's majestic. Working alongside the Rockies is getting to you. <laughs> Leon Patton. As figures goes in motion, Patton the single. And Freeman throwing on first down, which they did early in the game. Ah. And Master drops it. He's got great yardage if he takes it in. Yep. And it's a uh, naked bootleg. That, that they've run so successfully, and they, it was successful once again. And that's what I'm talking about, maintaining your personality, which they've been doing. And then they, all the run fake to the left. There comes Freeman out. He, he makes the proper read, checks down to the underneath route. Mastery drops the ball, plain and simple, and uh, shouldn't have. I mean, that's Freeman's, what, third completion of the day. And uh, one of them sh should have been passed in the Ferris. The other one should have been caught. He did overthrow in the back corner of the end zone to save the field goal opportunity. Second and ten. Blitz coming. He's got to react in a hurry. He does. Gonzalez turns around. Look at I found. Up against Terry Washington. It was a heads-up play by Freeman because the read had to be from the wide receiver as well. Absolutely. Barely turned around. He did. Freeman had to get it out there with some RPMs. Had to get it out of his hand quickly because, as you described, Joel, Colorado came with the all-out blitz. They brought the house. Freeman recognized it, and he got the ball out of his hand before Gonzalez finished his cut. When Gonzalez turned around, the ball was on top of him. Good reaction to the football. How huge is this third down for both sides? Massive. They're 6 of 11. Uh, great percentage on the day. 33% on the season. Freeman, quick one outside. And Nelson breaks away. Jordy Nelson. Uh -huh. He needs a block inside the 40. Waits for the block. One more. He's going to go the distance. Touchdown, Nelson. The junior from Riley, Kansas. Man, you talk about an answer. Chappelle Brown missed the tackle. Jordy Brown has great straight line speed. And what an answer. Jordy Brown right here. Watch Chappelle Brown miss the tackle. Chappelle Brown is now he now he's in trouble. And he's and he's taking it back. Trying to get back involved again. Jordy Nelson is, is very patient for his blockers. And there's Chappelle Brown 
at the end of it, trying to catch back up, but Jordy Nelson, what an outstanding run after catch of the football. Snidegrass for the point after. That is the longest play of the entire year for Kansas State, so we're seeing a lot of firsts out here today. Man, it was a three-yard out pattern that went 74 yards. A 27-14 lead now for the Wildcats as we'll come back after this word from Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottlers. Welcome back to Boulder, Colorado. Kansas State now leading Colorado by the score of 27 to 14, and it's now time for Dave and Joel's favorite part of the game, <laughs> cheerleaders of the week. That's right, Colorado Buffalo cheerleaders, one of the best in the nation, doing a nice job today. But how about Jordan Howard? They tell me this move hard to do. Arabian through to the full. There he is right there. Go ahead, Q and Jordan. Check this out, guys. Wow. Whoa. I tell you, the, the Russian judge gives it a 10.0. Perfect landing. He stuck the landing, baby. Unbelievable effort. I used to be able to do that. Man. It'll be brought back by Terry Washington. A couple of yards into the end zone. Man. They converge, get him across the 23, out to the 25. Jim Knox, we want to see you do the same thing. That's right. There's no way I can do that, but I tell you this, remember Molly from last yeah, night? Absolutely. She was a waitress. She's double dipping right now. Cheerleader, waitress from last night, and what's your major? Well, I'm studying Chinese, but most people on the squad are working and going to school and doing the best that they can. Quick, Chinese, throw it back up to Joel and Dave in Chinese board. Um, woman, ichi chu, la la doi. We're all cheerleaders. There you go. I knew that. That's great. I knew that. That's what it's all about, actually. Molly McBunner doing the job. From the 24, Bernard Jackson out on the edge. And lost the handle, then really took a shot, unfortunately. Ran into one of the equipment uh, trailers there, Zach Dials, one of the carts. That could have been seriously dangerous. How about two teams that have been struggling offensively, Joel, have scored 24 points in the last five minutes. And, and at the conclusion of this play, man, oh. that, that, that was a shot. I mean, that, and, but, but the contact. Been, that could have been. The contact was legal because it was delivered on the field of play. So 24 over the last five. What Incredible. have you enjoyed that much entertainment in one place? I'm telling you now, this this has been back and forth, and both teams have been answering. And you know, I, I have a lot of respect for what what's going on for Colorado here. They could have folded their tent a while ago. It's a one and eight football team, and they are fighting. Now a huge arm is waiting for the block. He's brought down by Giles. He gets it out across the 25 and the 27. The key to the touchdown run and a long one for Jordy Nelson, he showed patience downfield and did not run his blockers. He waited for them to catch up. And, and you know, it's it's amazing. Josh Freeman says, Jordy, it's third and medium distance. I'm going to get you the football. See if you can break a tackle and get the first down. He broke the tackle, and then he was off to the races for big big yards. I mean, you know, it, it was, that was just an incredible play. Nice job. And he broke the tackle with Chappelle Brown. It was see you later, and he did show great patience. That's one of the better plays we've seen this year, Dave. They're three of it on the third down, third and long. Jackson trying to do it himself again, and he won't get there. Eccles cleaned up after his slow down, down low again. What a sequence, though, for Zach Dials. Was he on top of the situation? Our Affleck trip. Affleck! Oh. Dialing, he dialed it in, now, did Dials. 2,000. Two Colorado players passing and rushing. You already got one. Darian Hagens, maybe? Yeah. Bobby Anderson. How oh, was that? it? And it no, was it wasn't a You see, yeah. I gave you way too much credit. Well, that Bobby Anderson just goes into the College Football Hall of Fame. Good man. Yep. Good golfer. They almost get to the punter. It's Fakers waiting for a block. Giving up a lot of ground in the process. Yeah. And they off the lookout. There's a block in the back. No flag. And he's still out of bounds across the 40. Out close to the 44. So Fakers, it looked like he was a no man's land. Manufactured something. Kansas State, 947 away from full eligibility. College 
Football on FSN, presented by Cell Phone Karma. It's real. Kia Zero Wireless reminds you to dial responsibly. Also brought to you in part by Famous Bowls. KFC, dig into great layers of flavor. KFC Famous Bowls. Also by Dr. Pepper. 23 flavors and add up to one bowl taste. Dr. Pepper, there's more to it. And by Overstock.com. Search, shop, save up to 70% at Overstock.com. What a setting. Folsom Field, Boulder, Colorado. And what a game. How can you not want to matriculate at the university when you see that type of a setting? <laughs> matriculate yeah. makes air today. Oh, baby. <laughs> what a place to be. What a beautiful place. Now, good field position after the punt returned by Figures. At K-State, up by 13, wants to choose some clock up. Pat. Little lane, now he's got to stay in bounds. And he will go down with the first down. So. 11 on the carry all the way to the 45 and even better yet for another 25 30 seconds off the clock and he lowered the shoulder and got everything he could out of that run the thing that kansas state has done jordy nelson did it figures did it on the punt return Patton just did it on that run patience let the blocking develop in front of you don't rush it don't get ahead of yourself ron prince has preached that to his football team and they have responded very quietly now, Leon Patton with 11 carries for 90 yards. Strong. They could not run the ball efficiently in the first half. In the first quarter in particular, they only had six yards on the ground. Patton, letting the pursuit slide by, breaks away from the ankle tackle as he just let the linebacker slide down his body. And what a job by Leon Patton, or it looked like the backer was going to be able to get to him, Brad Jones. Well, remember, this Colorado defense football team has given up two 100-yard rushing days in 22 games. And one of them was to Oklahoma, and it took over 30 carries to get it done for Alan Patrick. You have a little back here, the, uh, the, the little General Patton, who may do it in less than 15. His 12th carry, he's on the border of 100. Second and short after the game of six. And Freeman. On the comeback route, across the middle, it's Norwood, his tight end. And he's got a first down, down to the 30, so the little drag from the tight end across the middle of the field. And it was still out of the naked bootleg uh, offensive formation. And, and run goes to the left. Here comes Freeman out to the right, all by his lonesome again. And he goes to the tight end, who's running the shallow cross from the opposite side of the football field. Great design, tremendous execution. A day that the true freshman from outside Kansas City, the suburb of Kansas City, Grandview High School. Josh Freeman's never going to forget this. He's 21 of 24 for 235 and a couple of scores. Now, the gadget play to figures. He's got Freeman out in front of him, throwing a block and a good one. That by Freeman. Down the sideline. Wow. He's in. A convoy led by the 6'6 quarterback, Josh Freeman, and you might Years with a 30-yard reverse touchdown run. And I got a lot of respect for Greg Wofford, the other blocker out in front. The big left tackle, Greg Wofford, down the football field, running with the skill guys, running with Freeman, running with figures, throwing the block. Josh Freeman turns into a personal protector. Let's watch Wofford right here. Watch the big lineman get out in front. There's Freeman, there's Wofford. Look at this, look at this hustle. Look at Wofford stay with it down the field. Are you kidding me? That's a 300-pound offensive lineman just staying with it way down the football field. That's effort. Well, and after by Snodgrass, they are now bowl eligible. It is official with 7.42 to play a 20-point lead for K-State. Needed it, had to have it, and they came through on the road to snap a seven-game conference road-losing streak. Combination of Josh Freeman and Yvonne Figures collaborating on a little reverse. And Greg Wofford, and baby. Wofford, you know. <laughs> Got to get the lineman. Yeah. I got this big hoss up in the booth, so I can't forget about Wofford. Four plays, 56 yards, and every time K-State has been challenged. And Colorado has put together some nice drives in the second half. Have they ever responded? Yeah, they have an answer for it all. In the second half, Colorado's generated 239 yards. Kansas State, 227. The first half, Colorado had a paltry 64 yards, two yards rushing. Short kick. Man, in Byron Ellis, the running back across the 30. He paid for it. So he's put down. And 
just shy of the 35. Time now for our Kia Zero. Wireless call to the game. And it was the reverse. Look at Warford down the field. Look at Freeman down the field throwing triple blocks. What an effort. What an effort. 30 yard touchdown. A lot of big plays here in this second half. Great call. Great execution of said call. Colorado down now by 20 from their own 33. Jackson gets a block downfield from Spray. Not much there. He takes it to the 39. Give him a game of six. Colorado gave up 34 points to Baylor, but it took triple overtime for Baylor to generate 34 points. Kansas State has hung 34 on Colorado with about seven and a half minutes to go when they had scored that 34th point. Kansas State has made a lot of big plays against this very prideful defense. Jackson out of the gun, scrambling his way to a first down and runs out of bounds at the 44th. By the way, at halftime, good to see longtime coach Bill Snyder. Absolutely. You and I had a chance to spend a few minutes with him, and boy, I don't know if I've ever seen Bill Snyder that relaxed on a Saturday. And I think he may be coming back into the coaching ranks. You wait and see. <laughs> well, I'll tell you. First down line brought to you by Overstock.com. Your online source for savings on everything from video games to big screen TVs. I said to him, do you miss Saturdays? Do you remember what he said? Yeah. He said, well, you know, I'm going to wait till the end of the year to right. make some determinations and decisions. Well, I think Michigan State calls. I think he'd listen. Yeah, what a job he did resurrecting the Kansas State program. Put it at another level completely. Charles Campbell caught up with him. But he gets good yardage, six, almost seven on first down. Give him six. What Bill Snyder's all about is discipline, accountability, all the things that a program like Michigan State or North Carolina, those type of programs would need. You'd have to figure that he would have to be on the short list of those athletic directors. Now, is it the right situation for him? We'll have to wait and see. Jackson with plenty of time. And Williams with the catch. It is a first down, pulling it in inside the 35 to the 33 as we head down to Jim Knox. Jim? All right, Joel, time to answer an email. Got an email from AJ out of Manhattan. He wanted to know if his buddy Kyle Lang made it here. He traveled by himself, and I found Kyle Lang. It looks like you made it, huh? Yeah, I can made a lot of friends here. We're all going bowling. We're all going bowling. There you go. So they're happy about that. Kyle looks like he did make a lot of friends right here, guys. <laughs> Get your out, AJ. Childs giving chase. Man, it's Jackson. Down close to the 30-yard line. Stop at the clock with 6.01 to play. So bowling is the way to go. Absolutely. Jim Knox, he's gonna, he's gonna do a little crowd surfing. Knoxie, oh, be careful, Knoxie. Keep that wallet in your pocket. Oh, man. <laughs> feel like I'm in Manhattan. <laughs> Watch out, watch out. Don't dump them off. Don't dump them. They Don't ran dump out them. of stairs here. <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly your, your mosh pit, but from the 30. And Jackson dropped. It'll be a sack. Getting there first. Sorry. Yes. It was Blake Seiler, the senior from Goddard, Kansas, a former walk-on moved inside over the last couple of years from defensive end. You know, and that's why how you get quarterback sacks. It's all fits. The defensive tackles Time push out. the pocket. Colorado. The defensive ends keep the, the width of the pocket five, proper. 52. We have had some seriously big plays here in the second half. Pass plays from 74 and 27 yards for Kansas K State. 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 Yeah. Colorado, well, they had a run of 62. Pass plays. 23, 16, that's big by their standards. Colorado had a 40 and a 62. They had 102 yards on two rushes in the first half. They had two yards on 11 rushes. Timeout is called by Colorado with 5.52. Left in the contest, 34-14. So K-State knew what was ahead of them. They knew they had to get it done against a team that is, you know, on the skids this year and probably only this year. Once they get a quarterback, and that's no knock against Bernard Jackson, but they're so one-dimensional right now. Right. Colorado, they tip your hand because they don't throw the ball consistently. They get a quarterback, and I guarantee you that 
Dan Hawkins, as well as he recruited to Boise State, he's been in California, he's been in Texas, he will find a quarterback. Well, his son's a quarterback. Without a doubt, he's, and, and they saved his freshman year. They saved his redshirt year, and uh, and he's going to redshirt. He said, you know, he's not he's not the athlete. Right now, Bernard Jackson, with how they're struggling offensively, one thing that he gets, gives them is a dimension with his feet that his son would not give him, would give the football team. And, you know, deciding at this point in time, don't burn the red shirt, keep the red shirt for his son, and recruit a couple of other quarterbacks and make it a competitive environment. And Bernard Jackson will probably compete at quarterback, but he can play wide receiver, he can play running back, he can do a lot of things for this football team. Third a dozen, ball at the 35. Nice. Gear, the tight end went in motion. Good job escaping, and it's a first down to grab right around the 10 yard line. And an awkward position for the tight end taking it into the rather the wide receiver who took it in because he's getting up very slowly. Crawford struggling, yeah. Crawford struggling to work his way back up the sideline to the bench. But you have a, a case of Bernard Jackson creating a passing opportunity with his feet. I mean, most quarterbacks are sacked in that situation. He moves outside the pocket, finds Crawford down the football field, and, and Crawford, uh, as he goes to the ground, takes the hit, goes to the ground, and get, gets hurt a little bit. Looks like he maybe got hit in the back and bothering a little, little bit, but I think he'll be fine. Started back at the Colorado 33. First and goal at the nine. Williams and Sprague winds out of the field. Targets for Jackson to roll the same side. Intercepted, almost taken away. That was a break for Jackson because Urker had a great shot out of the free safety. He did. We were bragging on him earlier about throwing it away and living for another down. On first down, you don't want to take the quarterback sack roll into your right. You certainly don't want to throw an interception to the back corner of the end zone. And he almost threw the interception. He knew he didn't want to take the sack, but he threw it up for grabs and it almost came back to be a real problem. But he got lucky and lived for second down. Now they bring gear. And Holiday into the game. And when they bring Holiday into the game, he's usually pounding the football. He's not in there for blocking purposes. Second goal from the nine. They will put it up, though. Throws Ryer Gear the tight end. It'll be third and goal from the nine. That one really not very close as Jackson put a lot of mustard on it and too high for Ryer Gear. Third and goal at the nine for Colorado. You know, too high and about seven yards too far out in front. What happened is Bernard Jackson dropped back and he's been told throw the ball to the back part of the end zone right when you hit your last step of your drop. He didn't even look at the receiver. I mean, that's what a quarterback who's not used to passing does sometimes. You know, it's probably a play he doesn't feel completely comfortable with. He's just doing what the coach has told him. And it, it was nowhere near the receiver. So it goes back through the end zone incomplete. So third and goal here from the nine. There's the snap to Jackson. He'll hand it off. And straight ahead, this is Holiday, And he'll take it to about the one-yard line. And he is hit and met there by Brandon Archer and Andrew Urker. It'll be fourth and goal for Colorado from right at the one-yard line. Mel Holiday has given them some pretty good rushes here in this second half. Timeout, Colorado. Fourth and goal at the one. Here come the buffs. It's an offset eye here. And a man in motion across the formation from left to right. Jackson wants to throw far side, and he's got a touchdown. That catch is made by Tyson DeVray, a tight end to 6'6", junior from Hudson, Michigan. And the Buffs have their 20th point. It's 34-20, pending the extra point. So Tyson DeVray scores from a yard out on the throw by Bernard Jackson. K-State makes him go to a play they wouldn't feel comfortable with. It's only the fourth passing touchdown of the year by Colorado. They throw the ball right down the left side, out in the flat, just into the end zone. Nice throw by Bernard Jackson on play action. Tyson DeVray has his first pass reception for a touchdown this year. Crosby will try to add the point after. Holtz places it down. It's a spinner on the way up there, and good. Our score, 34-21 Wildcats after the extra point by Mason Crosby. Let's see if Colorado tries for the onside. They're lined up that way. They're going to kick it here to the near side, and it's covered by Antoine Moore. That kick only went about nine and a half yards, but Antoine Moore fell on it at the Buffalo 45-yard line in case they will have it there. 
Josh Moore. Did I say Antoine? Yeah. I'm sorry. It is Josh Moore. You got Josh Moore. You got the Moore correctly, <laughs> and he got the hands correctly on the football. They lined up with six guys to the left and the open field to the left. Only four guys to the right, and he came up and didn't kick it with his right foot. He kicked it with his left back to the four-man side. more and more guys doing that, by the way. And Because he had to line up four on that side of the kicker for safety reasons. Even the NFL has gone to that rule now. But Josh Moore was the last guy on the line for K-State. The ball was kicked toward him. He never fumbled at all. He leaned out before he hit the ground, grabbed it with two hands, fell on the football, and K-State has it at the Colorado 45-yard line. Josh has done a great job for the Cats this year. I-formation set here. Freeman hands it off to James Johnson, trying to go wide right, and he will have short yardage here, maybe a yard just inside the 45. And the clock stops momentarily with 4.45 to play in the game, and the Cats on top of the game, 34-21. It's something that K-State worked on a lot when you think about spring ball. Right now, Colorado, their third and final timeout. Wildcats at the buff 45. There's the turn and the give to James Johnson trying to get outside. Breaks one tackle. And a big effort there for a gain of only about a yard to the 44 for James Johnson. We talked about Leon Patton's leg drive earlier. Well, James Johnson's pretty darn good at it on that play, too, to get one yard. Tick, tick. Tick, tick, That's it. tick, tick. Third and nine with tick, tick going at 425 to play in the game. Now you might think about trying to get a first down, but it's third and nine. Probably K-State would run the football here, keep the clock rolling down. They're two scores ahead, two touchdowns ahead, basically. So you want to run the football here. Even if you have to punt, that's okay. It's great field position. You can run a lot of time off before you even have to have the punter snap the ball. You can even take a delay of game, which would be a good strategy if you don't make the first down here. Snap clock down to three. There's the snap, and Freeman rolling to the left and wants to throw. Fires, and what a sliding catch by Jordy Nelson at the 29-yard line. The gain from the 44 to the 29. What a throw and catch for the Wildcats. That is superb. Well, that shows all the confidence in the world. Right there is a giant statement about how well they think Josh Freeman is handling things right now. They took a chance that the ball might be incomplete. They threw a pass. Roll out to the left, delivered perfectly to Jordy Nelson. K-State picks up a first down on a third down conversion. The Wildcats believe in their quarterback today, throwing the ball in a controlled, safe way, and he did it there on third down. I formation. Here's Johnson working left side behind guard and tackle. He'll take it to the 25-yard line. Logan Robinson out there blocking for him, along with Michael Friesen. And it's a gain of four, second down and six. 3.25 and the clock moving. That catch for 16 yards a moment ago for Jordy Nelson. And now to 3.20 left. K-State fans sign up to receive... At K-State, the Alumni Association's free monthly e-newsletter delivered straight to your email inbox. Call 1-800-600-ALUM or visit www.k-state.com. It's the most receiving yards Jordy Nelson has had in his career. He had 107 yards last year against Oklahoma, including a 73-yard touchdown. Today, 117 yards and a 74-yard touchdown. Second and six. There's the snap to Freeman. Fakes to the back, rolling to the right and throwing high and incomplete at the 15-yard line. A Colorado defender had a hand on that momentarily, but it is incomplete. Josh again rolling to the right, being pressured, had that one tipped at the 15, and K-State now looking at third and six. Well, K-State trying to put the nail down on this game, playing bold and daring there, rolling out to the right. Josh Freeman threw it over the middle, and the ball slipped out of his hands just a little bit. Ball went a little bit high, had a little more pressure in his face than he's had today. It's a real story that the offensive line has done a great job of protecting Josh Freeman. It's sacked only one time. Rashad Norwood was the intended receiver. It's high formation set time here for the Cats, and here's James Johnson working left side, and he will slide to about the 23. He gets a couple running on this near left sideline, and the Cats will be faced with fourth down and four. Coach Ron Prince asked Josh Freeman to come over and talk to him. I'm sure he's going to want him to run down the full 25-second play clock before K-State decides what they're going to do. They're sitting here at fourth and three. You know, probably let the 25 seconds run out. Either snap the ball right before it runs out or call timeout to utilize as much time as possible. Snap clock is at 10. The game clock at 2.06. Wildcats lead 34-21, and Cedric Wilson goes wide right. Two tight ends, Mastrude on the far side, Norwood on the left, I formation, 
They run the ball, and Johnson blows inside the 10. James Johnson to the 5. First and goal, Wildcats with a minute 50 to play in the football game. They get it on fourth down. First and goal, Cats. James Johnson just chugging along, takes it to the 5. Great job of taking the ball over the left side on an isolation play. Quick hitting play, even though it was ran to the tailback. You don't normally say that. Quick hitting and a tailback run. But K-State's James Johnson, very fast to the hole, running directly toward the goal line, takes the ball right to the five-yard line. And the Wildcats now know all they've got to do is kneel down a couple of times. They've got a victory, or they can dive forward and run the ball if they'd like. Cats in the case IH red zone. Score your own touchdown with a new Magnum tractor from Hendry Brothers Implement in Seneca. First and goal at the five. There's the turn and the give. James Johnson spins, and down he goes at about the three. And the Wildcats continue to watch those seconds peel off of that clock. Under a minute, 15 to go in the game now. Let's go downstairs to Matt. And the last thing I'll throw in, through the first two-thirds of the season, or the first eight games, plenty of trials, plenty of tribulations. But going into the last third of the season, K-State just had to win. Beat Iowa State at home and come to Boulder and get that first road win. They've done it. They're bowl eligible. Kansas State gets Texas next week, guys. A great win for Ron Prince's first road win in the Big 12. No question about it. Wildcats led 17-0 at the break. We're down to 45 seconds to go, leading 34-21. Cedric Wilson goes wide right. Puski has been the fullback most of the day here today. And he will block for James Johnson here, and James will go forward running left to about the two. And now we're in the final 30 seconds of the ballgame. The Wildcats are going to be bowl eligible. They're going to be six wins and four losses. The Wildcats are going to be 3-3 three and three in the Big 12 North. We will not run another play. The final 10 seconds to be marked off here. Kansas State will win it 34-21. to 21. What a huge victory today for the Wildcats.